is eSports. You yes. think eSports. <laughs> this is FTC. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Ignite Gaming Lounge in Skokie. Uh, this is Callisto joined by Seth. Uh, we, if you see us, you already know what's up. Grand Blue Fantasy versus we're gaming. Best game uh, in a. God, my voice cracking like I'm 13 again. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So uh, we got a reasonably decent bracket tonight. I think um, we've got a full. I think we've got like a full a full eight bracket. So. Yeah, Big Willie chilling. I think we have slightly more than eight Do actually. It? Yeah. Oh. Looks like we got about about ten. Uh, not okay. bad. Uh, this is uh, kind of the first one since they, they started doing bi-weekly here uh, yeah. every other Friday. We are still here weekly. Uh, it's just casuals every other week, which yeah. is not a bad deal. Uh, up first, we're going to have board games on the player one side, Demetis on the player two side. Board games, I didn't see the pick, but he's been working on Vasaraga uh, in between grind and KOF. He's been going real high. Oh, we got the Biesel bub. Okay. Big bubs. And Demetis, Demetis already knows what's up. Going straight to the top tier. I think I was watching... Uh I think I was watching them play a little bit during this, and look like they're going back and forth. So I'm really curious to see exactly. Uh, this is Board Games' first event out, so I'm actually really excited to see them here. Yeah, he signed up for a couple of the online. Uh, speaking of tomorrow, uh, Waifu Dome online. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at the Waifu Dome. We're running an Upplay tournament for the Midwest and for the West Coast a little bit later in the day. Board Games going to be in that. Look, already right. kind of feeling the bubs pressure more than he had been on the Vasaraga teleporting out of the corner. Yeah, I actually really like uh, I like board games. I really like the play style here. It's aggressive enough, but he knows when to kind of taper off and. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. My Let's man's go. my man's woke up with the spice. Wake and bake, baby. Bad it on the TP, but oh. didn't get the full punish. You got away with murder, but gets hit with the frame trap. This is bad. Yeah. This is a good makeup. Demisus had a little bit of a misconfirm there. Tried to do the medium Rekka from a 2M against Standing. Doesn't work like that. Uh, but actually did a really good job sort of collecting the next hit and getting the SSBA confirmed. He's going to take the first round. That conversion is really funny because if you do light after uh, counter hit, um, after the counter hit Palm and Rekka, you don't really get anything off yeah. of it. It's hard to confirm. But if you do the medium, it bounces. You get a full conversion off of it. You can probably the quarter. Ooh, the JL active all the way down, able to set up the tick throw here. Runs into the get GP, off though. Me. Hard knockdown, so he's able to teleport out of the corner safely. We're seeing uh, we're seeing De um, Demetis get away with that, uh, with the 6M follow-up to the Rekka a lot, and I don't know if Board Games just is not used to it yet, but yeah, it's very I, punishable. I honestly would uh, would not expect that he's quite gotten to learning the, the ins and outs of 6 Rekka. I mean, that's... A, Pretty big knowledge check, right? That's one of the, the strengths of the character is if you don't already know how six pressure works and you don't know that like that right there, right? You don't know to mash that. Uh, it can be a lot more difficult. Demetrius is going to take game one here. It's off to a bit of a rough start, but Demetrius is playing really well. Um, we've been joking about it all to the time, but this is like, what, the, uh, the fifth Midwest six player? Yeah. <laughs> I really, like... Good use of the teleport to bait the, uh, or to... It, it, as annoying as it is to have to fight this character a lot, actually, I'm always glad. Uh, we used to have a uh, kind of the opposite problem in Chicago fighting games where not enough of our players were using top-tier characters, so they weren't, cause we weren't ready for the matchup when we hit the majors. Uh, no shortage of six players now, though. And the thing is, especially after this last patch, I don't think he necessarily Ooh, got... That Ooh, Ooh, okay. Uh, Got hit with the range. Ran to the DP, though. Board game still with a slight life lead. Going to get some chip from the EX Fireball. That's the thing we'll say about this, too, is I think in terms of this patch, Six necessarily didn't get weaker. He doesn't benefit as much from the new mechanics as some other characters do. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit before the stream. Uh, I, I do think the forward walk speed is very good for him because he already had the fastest forward walk speed in the game, and now it's even faster. Uh, so he can sort of... He doesn't have to commit to run as much, so he can play a little bit safer. But I agree with you that, you know, the, the way that Rush only really converts to Rekka mid-screen means that if he's throwing out EX Rekka raw and neutral, he's not going to have a conversion tool from Rush the way most other characters would. Absolutely. Bubs actually, to some extent, might suffer from that same problem. If his EX Fireball is down, he might not have reliable conversions off of Rush. But Bubs, I don't know about I, I'd have to look around and see that because I feel like Chaos Caliber is really good in terms yeah, of Yeah, maybe converting. it just reaches far enough. He, uh, he may not get anything particularly great off of it, but he'll get the hard knockdown in a setup following, which is 
better than some characters get for sure. See uh, Tiago Santana in the chat joining us. Uh, had a fun time watching the Brazil tournament uh, yesterday, actually. They had some really strong players. Yeah, you were talking about that, and I didn't get a chance to catch it at work when I was. I, yeah, it was I a really, really fun tournament. I spent like four hours watching Matchstick Melee they had a, today. Uh, so. They had a person named uh, AOA that reminds me a lot of our own Kane, actually, in the way that, that he played. Board games, though, uh, staying in here using that 5M. And I, I think both of these characters, you know, talking about the new mechanics again, uh, I think both of them might actually benefit from Overdrive the most because they're both solid characters in pressure and they can force you to block a lot of normals. And those chip damage on the normals, that adds up, actually. It, it's substantial, especially for characters that can run like a full auto combo worth of pressure into a safe EX and then back off. Absolutely. And the thing, too, is that Bubs' normals, he hits. So you see a lot of like 2L, 2L, 2M and other strings that he can just use to chip you out pretty well and then either convert or back off depending. Yeah, or do like 2 and 4 L and get even more chip. Like Absolutely. All right, pressure in the corner. Demon's just trying to close this out. Board game staying alive though. One DP will finish this round. He's not being too aggro with it. One DP will finish this round for both players. Oh, he oh, held the that's button. that's a good trade. Yeah, that was a mistake on Demetrius' part. Uh, he actually had the parry, which would have been really good for him, but he held down the H button, which forced the command dash forward and ended up actually giving up his advantage, didn't get a strike for it, and got hit. It's a very common mistake with Lola, or with like people who are developing six. You So especially if you're using... Uh, using it for easy input or just accidentally yeah. hold it down. And no, you just leave just your hand in place for a couple extra frames. And All right, good meaty with the 2L. And it's not even like... And so H has the... H, you can do the L follow-up by holding H, or you can do M and go airborne. But you almost never see that because, one, M, if the M follow-up is just funny. And yeah. The L follow up, or the, the H follow up, rather, the forward dash does have some utility for punishing, like kind of some fireball cancels, things like that. But for the most part, usually you just want to take the strike, take your hard knockdown. I find, it, it's I, a momentum turner, yeah, right? I, f I find the best use for the strike through is when you have characters like Fairy or Matera who can set up. Who can create yeah, yeah, exactly. Where, where they can have a remote meaty on top of you and you can just bail out of the situation. Yeah, their meaty is so like the layer layer zero is their meaty is meant to catch parry and beat it, but then the layer one is I'm dashing through. It's time to block. Yeah, and if they went for like the instant overhead or something, then you're gonna get out. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of, he went for the side switch. It was a good check by board games, but unfortunately went for something that didn't combo off the two L. Now what I am curious about is if that was a, an easy input or mm -hmm. a parry. Or it was an accidental parry into... Oh, that's punishable. That is punishable. Going to get the hard knockdown here. Has a chance to live. Command grab. This is going to do most of the remaining health, but not all of it. I believe that's a 4,000 damage super. Yeah, less if you do uh, the easy input. But that is going to close it out. Demetrius moving on. Board game, so pretty good showing. Had some good pushback uh, for a character that, honestly, I didn't even know he was playing. I, I He had been on Vasaraga every time I had seen him previously. He can't be more than like a, a week or two in with this Bubs, and it was actually, you know, showing some good pushback there. The good thing about Bubs right now is there are a couple of notable high-level players that you can get data from pretty quickly, which I think is important, especially when developing a character. It's like you said earlier, like we ha we need people who technically like play multiple characters and do multiple things, but having that on-hand resource to be able to watch an watch another player and just develop a game plan solely by like. Kind of reverse engineering what they do is yeah. such a beneficial learning tool, especially for people like me who aren't necessarily huge lab monsters. But I can watch someone do something. Yeah, and, and be go, like, oh, shit, why am I not doing that? Yeah, like, like, that, that looks like a good idea. Well, you look at it, you see how it works, and then you're like, ah, all right, sick. All right, so having a look at our matches, we're waiting uh, on the next one to be called up. Uh I think Trade War and Lil Zap would be the next one up, but Lil Zap was stuck in Strive, so we might need to wait that out. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of things in Strive. Um, I do. I see two that can happen. Yeah, there's uh, also. Uh, I mean, both it's a cool week, right? Grand Blue and Strive both on brand new patches. The first offline uh, weekly since both of them dropped. So. A lot of new stuff. Uh, they are, I believe, they're recording something. Uh, uh, Ham Jams is recording something. I don't know if it's Strive or Soul Calibur. 
if not, if they're not streaming or recording Strive, then I'll probably throw on the end of it tonight. Uh, we'll we'll see how that goes as we get there. But we have a whole lot of Grand Blue left. Uh, yeah, that's match one of like a pretty full size bracket, and yeah. probably a good preview of what we'll see tomorrow as well. Yeah, and uh, I would say most of our the standard Chicago players are here. Zach in a box and Jukum are probably the the primary two that are missing. But otherwise, uh, of course, the two of us, Flower Man uh, is going to be playing Demetis, uh, who you saw in the last match. Mars is here. Uh, Mars coming off a really good showing last night in Match Six Melee. Uh, and the new patch really kind of invigorated Mars. He's been really excited about just the changes. Yeah, because Sori's is fucking juiced. <laughs> that, that character already probably did the most chip in the game, and now he does even more chip. And then if the OD, like, the, the way the overdrive works is you retain your super as long as you don't get hit. If you get hit, you lose one third worth of a bar. So if you get hit at least three times, you lose your overdrive. But if you don't, all that time in between, you still have a super. So he can exploit all that chip in the corner and then still do the install, go into, you know, my grandpa's too strong mode. And he still, that's the other thing, too, is he still has the ability to build muscle tokens, which are really important to his gameplay as well. We were, sh we were seeing it last night in Mars's matchstick melee run. But Soros with five, Soros with five muscle stocks is basically at fifty percent life with the damage reduction that he gets. Oh, you're up. So oh, that shit. would be. Uh, so I believe that's Frank Apotamus sitting down. Let me confirm that. You're Frank Apotamus. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's actually going to be Seth coming up against Frank Apotamus. Uh, Seth, uh, curious to see what he picks off the bat. I do think we are going to see. The Ladeva, uh, she seems like she got some pretty substantial hookups from this patch. Uh, most notably, it, you know, the rush, I think, is good for a lot of characters. It's good for her as well. Uh, but probably a bigger deal is the forward walk speed buff across the cast. Now she can sort of scoot into position a little bit easier. She can walk you into the corner uh, a little bit easier. She's in a really good position in that regard. Uh, and, of course, he always has the sheesh in the background ready to go if he feels the need to pull out the pocket. So we'll see what Seth has in store for us. Definitely excited to see more uh, Lediva in this patch. I, I do think she got relatively hooked up. I swear to God, these motherfucking... What are you e -boy, waiting on? E-boy bracket runners telling me when I should be playing. No, he said that's Frank Apotamus. You should be playing him. Oh, 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 yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's God you. damn it. <laughs> Bring Apotamus with the Doria shirt. So we got a little bit of action on the wheelie cam over there. He's hanging out. We got we got some okay news at the vet. We took him the other day. Uh, his ears still bugging him, but uh, we're being told that you know the actual uh, ear infection that he's had since November is finally looking like it's clearing up. So give some love to Big Willie. He's definitely been kind of kind of powering through it. Very old boy. A lot of people do ask me like. Does he actually sleep that much, or is this pre-recorded footage? No, Willie is like 17 or 18 years old. He he sleeps a lot. He's like me. He's he's an old tired boy. I'll square this camera up a little bit for a moment. I need like a broomstick or something that I can reach uh, reach the camera with from here. I did hear the Lediva pick on Seth's side. All right, going to be a Vera here for Frank Apotamus, popular character. See what he's had time to figure out. Uh, this is definitely a character that Seth is going to have some awareness on the matchup. Vera character, uh, you know, benefits highly from the new rush mechanic. Yo, yeah, that's scary. That could have been a punish even if he just mashed L, but Seth 
Going in with the command grabs to start. A couple SPDs. There's the bust out DP from Frank Frankopotamus. Using that 214L. There you go. Now using the Dracane a little bit. 214L, very scary to just sort of throw out uh, if you're not spacing it perfectly. Oh, oh, Seth didn't realize it was the medium version. Could have held up, gotten a punish, but able to recollect a combo here. Going to get the hard knockdown. Staggering with the jabs. Frank Apotamus having some good patience here. Light punish on the rush. Seth working towards the corner. Frank Apotamus trying to stay alive. That's going to be punishable. Oh, no. A little bit of a miss. Still, though, uses the frame advantage from the EX headbutt. Going to collect the EX SPD. Round one going to Seth here. Suplex City indeed. Looking like tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, uh, the Rumbleverse crossplay beta dropping on uh, PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox. Uh, definitely check it out. Of course, our good friends here in Chicago at Iron Galaxy making that game super fun. Wrestling theme Battle Royale. Check it out. Seth, great 2L check. Seth, uh, notoriously difficult to open up with instant overhead. Very good at seeing them, checking them with the 2Ls. Howdy, uh, Church Twin Blades. Tournament's just getting started. Only our second match, but hopefully we're going to have a good one here. 2 and 4 M, finding the counter hit. Frank Apotamus trying to extend the pressure in the corner, taking a turn on minus one. Seth getting clipped. There's the wake up too well, though. Able to close it out. Game one going to Seth. That, okay. A little bit, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't know if she has a five frame. Uh, close five L might be six frames, so maybe that isn't a punish, but the SPDs are working right now. There's the bust out again. We've seen that a couple of times. I, Frank Potamus, I think, has his hard limit of two SPDs he's willing to hold before the DP comes out. Seth using the rush for plus frames, caught the jump out with the five H, converts it to the headbutt. Nice pickup on the ground bounce there. Catching a jump like that is actually uh, makes for a better conversion. The higher they are up in the air when there's a ground bounce special in Grand Blue, it bounces higher depending on how high they were when it hit them. All right, speaking of, going to get the air command grab here. Anti-air command grab, that is. She actually has a separate air command grab. Plus frames on the headbutt. Scoops. And that's going to do it. Seth moving on in winners. Frank Apotamus still in the tournament, though. All right. Looks like we're going to swap places here. All right, so we're going to do the old switcheroo. We're going to be uh, myself and SSK. I'm, it's actually been a really long time since we played. Uh, yeah, I'm actually curious about this. Hey, can we, like, uh, phone uh, a Spiral in or something to... <laughs> yeah, get him in Discord. Yeah, let me, uh, let, me, let me pipe him in. That way I'm not, like, holding this down on my own. I, I got faith in you. You got it. You got uh, it. I mean, I'm going to try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skedaddle on over to your seat. The name's already in there. Cool. Uh, is there a way I can save, save like, a sponsor name for my uh, for mine when I come up? Know, like, I'll, I'll okay. Just let me I'll, – I'll type it in. Don't worry. You don't need to see what it actually is. No one needs to know what I am. Anyway, so we've said it before, and we've said it a million times, but – SSK has always been sort of the rising star, the young gun for our scene. And he has body bags on all of us, I think still except for me in this bracket. So I'm really curious to see exactly what we're going to get from him tonight because he's he said it himself, he's felt a little bit inconsistent lately. So will we see the very strong, confident young gun or are we going to see someone with a little bit of a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. I mean, we see that already with uh, Ryan here, but you do what you can and you can what you do. Um, let me... I promise I know what these buttons do. We're just going to play your cam. Yeah, you can see him. There we go. But 
So we've got them go ahead and doing the button check. Let me set this. All right, yeah, there we go. Uh, let me get you a get you a last little little bit of Willie, and then Willie Cam, and then Match Cam. Match. All right. One thing I really like, what, so one thing you'll see from SSK a lot is he's very good about his stock management. You'll see him kind of work his way back. He's willing to give up space to start getting his stocks in because with the way that Percy's built, all that he needs is really a good buffer into Command Dash to really get something started. So I don't blame SSK for his strategy when he comes, when he tends to go for that because it's effective. It has options. Technically, there are some characters that can call it back, but we've not seen that from Ryan yet. So we'll kind of judge that as we go. Good anti here. Catches Ryan. Doesn't get a full conversion off of it, but Ryan manages to use that to get him into the corner, which is very important for Cat. That's kind of... Cat can do a lot of things. Some would say, you know, she obviously took a little bit of damage from the previous patch. But one thing I think that Cat really does well is utilizing the new mechanics to bolster her corner carry and kind of set off some of her damage. But didn't really help there with the wake-up super SSK taking the first round. I'd say this is a pretty back and forth set. Both of these players are very skilled at what they do. So being able to kind of judge that in and execute is gonna, I think is gonna be what decides the match here, especially depending on how quick each of them get in their head. Uh. And so if you'll notice, there's probably a lot of, like a pretty decent amount of input buffers right now, just due to the fact that what happened with the most recent patch is the input buffer that the game had had been so in early season one there was an input buffer because a lot of the times to get specific inputs you had to do like half circles for quarter circles and it was just a bit of a mess and so they went ahead and made that change and it cleaned it up a little bit but in the recent patch they undid it because people were struggling getting dp inputs so if you see just kind of something that maybe was supposed to be a fireball or along those lines it's probably what happened but SSK taking a pretty strong game one and here we are at the fireball war so you'll see Callisto do uh, do the raw thrust a lot it is technically unsafe but if you space it in a specific way uh, the risk reward because she can't technically be punished from it but if she gets the counter hit off of it you're going for a ride overdrive One thing I definitely want to see a little bit more from SSK is I think there's a little bit of passivity here when it comes to I want to create openings, and that's really dangerous at a certain point. So and we saw it there when, Callisto, when he was willing to throw a fireball, and Callisto just bolted in, and it worked. One of the things we've seen here is just I think the, I think the damage differential and just kind of a couple of clutch moments have been what SSK has been doing really well on. So, scores updated for anyone watching. Sorry about that. I am not the best at running and commentating alone. But, Clisto getting the corner. And that's one thing uh, he and I were talking about right before we got started is I'm really happy for him. Callisto has a new way to set up a sweep combo off of Rush. He loves it. He's already mastered it. He's just vibing. But... We saw it here manage to close out the round against SSK. I think this is the, I think this is probably, well, obviously this is gonna be the turning point depending on whoever gets the round, but I think if Callisto can go ahead and clinch the second game out, his adaptations are starting to kick in in terms of how SSK is wanting to play. And I think in the long term, especially from a more experienced player, that will make a lot of difference, especially with maybe a little bit unrefined but powerful game plan from SSK. What's well, a mix? And that's one of the things I think that Catalina still does very well is that the way that her strike throw is, especially now that she has Rush. Oh, that's dead. Call him Pack Watch. Mm. 
What I'm really curious to see is if SSK is going to stay where he's at or if he is going to... Or if he's going to go ahead and switch, but it looks like he's just mashing right back into the Percy. That was absolutely an input error from SSK. The Raw Command Grab does not have that range as much as he would like it to, but now manages to kind of convert a bad situation and take the corner, which, much like Cat, Percy is extremely dangerous. One of the things you see a lot from him, especially, is the fa the far advantage. He has the far H, which is a really good conversion tool. You just have time for days to confirm off of it. And you have far M, which... As a buffer tool, it's maybe one of the best buttons in the game because he can just sit there, he'll move, like he'll he'll shimmy a little bit forward for you, and then if you get hit, you're going for a ride. See, these are the kind of adaptations I was talking about in terms of how Callisto plays. We see it right there, but SSK, uh, a little bit of his passivity is starting to catch up with him. The round start immediate run in for the grab to deal with stocks was a good decision from Callisto, and I think it really kind of highlights just how he's able to adapt it as a player. You can only do something a couple of times before he really catches on. And while this game can be explosive, especially in a set like this, especially early on, when he has the ability to make these decisions, he's willing to go for them. It's when he's low on health and a little bit lower on resources that can make a difference for him that we'll see Callisto kind of clam up and be willing to back off. But we are going to last game, last round. SSK looking to go ahead and make a little bit of a conversion, but gets anti here by Callisto. Doesn't get as hurt as he should have for that, but input errors happen, and they happen to the best of us. So you'll see you'll see Callisto get the throw and then immediately kind of go into the jump. Every character has a unique version of the sa of a safe jump set up off of that. So SSK, like especially with his life as it is as it is. Callisto's willing to take it a little bit slow and deal with it, but setup goes wrong. Callisto gets hit, and SSK has decided to cash out. This isn't going to kill, but it's at a position where with the cooldowns that he has left, SSK may not be able to kill, but he's going to do some damage. The rough spot for Callisto here, too, is that because he has gone ahead and gone into overdrive, he doesn't have the ability to rush through some of the Percy normals like you think. But in the end of it, it doesn't really matter just because good buffer, good confirm directly into super is all Callisto needs. And to, uh, taking the set 2-1 over SSK, my commentator is on his way back. I am going to go ahead and... Notate the scores. Uh, uh. My God, the kid's making me work. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, you know, I was giving everyone the, ro the lore when we came in. Um, I'm updating our brackets, too, so... Yeah, SSK, uh, we've talked about it a bunch that, you know, he's he's slowly, you know, collecting his, his bingo book, right? Kind of knocking all of uh, all of us old guard off one at a time. So it is, becoming a really scary player. That's the thing is, even when SSK is technically in his own head a little bit, when he's playing hot, he's playing hot. Yeah, and, and I told him, like, literally all that, all that he did wrong in that entire game was he got the one big hit kind of halfway through that last round there, and he just cashed out all of his meter on, you know, a swag combo that wouldn't kill. And if he held that 100 meter and he had overdrive available or he had rush available or something like that, uh, would have had a lot more options. And then, you know, as soon as I popped overdrive, then it's just like, shit's hard, dude. Overdrive's good. <laughs> yeah, I think, a bi I think a big part of, I think a big part of the, of what tonight is going to be is seeing how players have adapted to the new mechanics. We've already seen it a little bit from Mars and Flower Man has definitely been on Twitter posting like posting some setups, but yeah, I I haven't seen a lot of Flower Man specifically play. We have seen we we have seen Mars play in some netplay tournaments. Uh that for sure was uh, 
Yeah, I, I think a lot of us sort of wanted maybe a more thorough balance patch, but I do appreciate them giving these mechanics time to rock and like let's see how they act in the wild and then tune from there. And I definitely agree. And the other thing too is for is I definitely wanted a consistent balance patch, but I really think that in terms of these mechanics, a lot of characters who are traditionally considered like bottom tier or non viable are yeah. a lot better now. Yeah, I mean, both of our characters, like, both substantially buffed by Rush. Like, yeah. for sure. Both of our characters are eating pretty good. Loane is eating good. Yeah, Lo Wayne, well, really Loane got also, like, actual yeah. buffs, Oh, too, yeah, Loane like, did actually get balance changes, which is but, weird. But, but, but I like that they're giving us time to learn how to use these mechanics fully before we also have to, like, relearn uh, sort of how to play our characters. I mean, they're not giving people going to CEO next or in, like, a week or so, but... Uh, I digress. Yeah. Definitely, uh, big majors coming up, CEOs coming up. Uh, they're a little, you know, less than combo breaker. I, there were about 90 players in the bracket. I, I just seated the CEO, like, today. So I, I did have a good look at the entrance. Uh, might, uh, might have to see some of that seating. Uh, when we're, they, I uh, need, I need the, I need the eSports insider here. Then, uh... Evo, of course, right? Like, less, as far as I know, Grand Blue's still on pace to be an arena game for Sunday Finals. It's currently, it's held its spot. I think uh, it's currently at fifth. If they so. do the karaoke thing, we're going to put on existence, and the crowd's going to pass out because it's, like, 11 minutes long. <laughs> like, they're just going to expend too much breath singing and we just gotta, faint. We got to get that, and we got to get <laughs> peace and quiet on there because, like, I want that, like, <laughs> yeah. like, I want, uh... I don't know. I, I'm excited for like most Strive songs, even the the cheesy ones. Like the the idea of you know smell of the game with a couple thousand people in an arena singing it. I think that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, smell of the game's pretty good. I really like. Uh, I definitely want to see some folk make it, take advantage. Like I'm, I'm trying to hear. Uh, I'm trying to hear drift like the entire like. I'm wanting to hear. You know. It. You know what I didn't look at today in the June 10th patch since since you know june 10th is now the new you know re-up of dice Gaze vision if they made crawl choosable i unf i regret to inform you that they did not oh that is such a fucking crime i cannot believe you can't just use that i mean no i get it because i also love discount avenge sevenfold but bro that song's so good <laughs> it, no it's good no, no, no. I, I was like you say that like it's a bad thing no oh no i i had uh i had um Nightmare uh, or the Nightmare album on this week, just kind of <laughs> labbing some stuff. So I'm not, I'm not against it, but you kind of got to call a cigar a cigar. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm old. I, I only listened to like the first two Avenged Sevenfold CDs, uh, and then it was just like in the the little thing in front of you. Hey, Nightmare is a good album, but City of Evil, nah, that's a hell of an album. Let's. <laughs> That's what we're going to spend off of this. Like, fuck all this esports bullshit. Let's do a music podcast. I, I want to do, you know how Combo Breaker has sort of like the, the, the gritty, you know, hip-hop slash metal kind of aesthetic, uh, I, you know, based, based on, you I'd know, say, just Rick's. Yeah, I feel like it leans a little bit more towards, like, hip-hop with, like, some... The clothing, I think, skews towards, like, dirtbag metalhead yeah, with, like, the it, flannels Yeah, it's really shit. in line with Rick's aesthetic. And, and if I ever throw my own major, I definitely want, like, the old van store. Like, there's going to be a fucking skate ramp in the middle of the tournament. It's just going to be, like, lag wagon on in the background. That's my dream is, like, get a licensing agreement with Fat. I think that if I emailed Fat Rec and was like, hey, we play video games and I want to play Strung Out in the venue, they'd be like, yeah, fuck it. Give us, like, 500 bucks. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna need to buy us a nice dinner, the entire band. All right. Cool, I don't know. Man. Fat Mike might be like, we need a, You gotta send us drugs. You have to mail us actual <laughs> drugs, and then you're on. But we are gonna have Mars coming up against Lil Zap. Uh, Lil Zap. Uh, not sure if I've seen him specifically play Grand Blue before. Uh, definitely has played on stream for other games. I believe in Strive. Uh, Mars, though. I mean. This is a tough draw for your first your first set of the tournament. Oh, absolutely. Especially uh, with, like, Grandpa got some cake. Yeah, and Mars, I think, you know, we, we would – it'd be fair to call Mars, you know, top three in Chicago most of the time pre-patch. 
before Sorius got hooked up. Uh, I, I mean, he was one of our better players before Sorius got buffed the first time. And he's all, it's safe to say, too, that like he is just an overall fundamentally strong player. He's very good at channeling his aggression and getting, like, running his, not so much running his game plan, but forcing it. And he will fall back and just play footsies when he needs to. Oh, that, that's punishable, but wasn't ready for it. Lil Zap getting a little bullied in the corner. Overdrive already available. Is he going to pop it right after the frame? I think he does it here. Uh, there it is. Yep. And now it's bully time. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, that's a no yeah. white. <laughs> there's a no white woman zone. You're going to sit your ass down. Yeah, Lil Zap. I. Uh, Kind of just getting bullied by the, the level one knowledge checks here. Uh, Matera should be able to get that spacing to get a punish uh, against the, the 623H. Uh, the EX up kick, you see. The up kicks are very good. They count as a heavy in terms of priority, so they'll crush most normals. And they're oh. six frames, making them. Oh my them... god, was that a was yes. that a hop 2H? Yeah, you know what? In this economy? I was gonna call out Mars because he always said, Oh, you didn't 2H hop. He didn't 2H the first hop, but he 2H the second one, so I can't talk shit. No, he's at a 50-50. Let's see what the let's see what the success rate is by the end of the rat or the end of the match. We might not get to see any more hops, honestly. Uh kind of bullying his way to that game one. Uh, I thought I set that. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. It, it resets a little bit. Ah, uh, my bad. There we go. Back in there, Mars. Up a game. Lil Zap does have the corner. Oh, bet it on the slide, though. And the back throw. I kind of like that, right? He could have taken a full punish with the crouching, but he chose to take a shorter route to the corner. Why is that an air juggle? This character is fucking cracked. And that meter is almost there. There it is again. Yeah. Overdrive. It's Time. like, sorry, you're getting chipped out now. Do not, like. Yeah, Lil Zap actually. Block and die. Lil Zap did try to make a heads up play. Tried to use the back shift there to escape Matera with one of the good ones. Uh, what I mean by that is there's basically two speeds of recovery for back shift. Uh, if you have an invuln special, if you have a DP or, you know, a parry or something, uh, you have a slower back shift. But if you're like Matera and you don't have any invuln other than Super Skybounds, uh, then she just gets a faster one. It's only 20 frames. But in the corner, you're still pinned down. And speaking of pinned down, uh, Chip this has tried it the, again. This has been the exact cadence we have seen for every single one of these matches is uh, Zap does something. It is not the best option and then he gets put in the corner and beaten to death yeah and mars his pressure is just kind of too well flushed out right like mm -hmm. you're gonna get put in the corner you really 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 if you're fighting mars you have uh, to pay it. attention to his meter because he is going to try at some point to do that overdrive when he's at minus frames and at that point you got to be ready to spot dodge it it's hard right now i don't think people have had a lot of time to really get used to what overdrive looks like uh the important part is you have to know every character's specific animation of the startup of theirs by the time you see the pop and you hear the noise it's too late the overdrive already kind of eats your inputs and if you haven't already spot dodged or done some sort of invul you gotta hold it uh so definitely you know if, if you're working your way through the mechanics in this game trying to get used to this 2.80 patch one of the best places you can start the two most important things to learn are how do you use rush? What are your rush confirms at various spacings in the screen? And what does every character's overdrive look like? That's going to be so important for matchups going forward. Because keep in mind, overdrive, if it does whiff, it's counter hit recovery. They did bake in, you know, you getting killed for being wrong with overdrive. If you can spot dodge that, you get a free counter hit 5H. So just something to practice. As we're waiting for the next match... Also, I'll give you a look at the boy, Big Willie, hanging out at home. He's got the the full extension hanging off the desk. He actually looks kind of kind of scuffed right now. I don't know what he's been up to in the bed. He was sleeping peacefully a few minutes ago. I'm kind of mad right now though. All right, waiting to find out what our next match here is. I think it's going to be Flower Man and Demetis coming up. So we'll get our first look at Flower Man 
Uh, have not seen him play a lot in this patch yet. Uh, going to assume that he is sticking with the fairy. Uh, fairy yeah, does, you know, because of her invuln DP, I believe she has one of the, the slower back shifts, as I mentioned. She doesn't get a whole lot from that mechanic. She does get a lot from overdrive. She does have some really oppressive chip damage when she's in overdrive. Uh, Rush is kind of weird for her. I do think she can make really good use of it from like 2M, from Sweep, from Far 5L, but I don't think the meter, you know, the the what you get for the expense is really that good on Rush compared to popping Overdrive and then you still have the Ball Super available if you, you know, catch the opportunity to anti-air, you still have the install super available. You can do a bunch of chip, use your normals, and then once you sort of use your timers up, or not use your timers up, that's probably a bad idea for install because your timers don't restore and install, but you can run some offense, collect some chip, and then, you know, try to focus on spending that meter before your overdrive runs out. All right. Get the, the T.O. on the horn here. Also, if you guys are uh, looking to play some Grand Blue Fantasy versus in the Midwest, uh, I am running uh, the Waifu Dome online tomorrow. We, we took a bit of a break, took about nine months off, kind of getting situated in the new house. But uh, now that we're all set, uh, going to be bringing that back. I am also running it for the West Coast in addition to the Midwest. Okay, yeah, so it is going to be Flower Man and Lil's app. Constant battle with the players. The more I move the camera to the left, the more they keep scooching out. Everyone's trying to make my my life more work, I think. The poor streamers. Somebody think of the streamers. Stop scooching out of the camera shot. How do I like Cat in the new patch? Um, I think Cat is objectively buffed because everyone is buffed. I do think she is, uh, she still has a lot of the problems she did have. One of her major problems was fixed, which was her ability to get confirms when thrust is down. That was actually helped out a lot by thrust. Uh, her being very punishable and not having very good pressure in a game where now everyone walks faster and Rush is very good at breaking up block strings. Uh, still kind of keeps her with a lot of the same issues. I'm hesitant to say Cat is bottom two, not because I think she's bad necessarily in this version. I do think she's stronger, but just everyone's stronger, and I can't really think of a lot of characters who are worse than her. Uh, other than Gran, I do think Gran is probably bottom one at this point. Now that both Lodiva and uh, Lowane got hooked up with some, you know, L Lodiva mostly just by mechanics. The new mechanics work pretty well for her. And then Lowane also got some changes specifically to him. He can now use here, uh, Human Pyramid Attack as uh, sort of a, a more traditional cash out super from certain hits. Uh, so that's pretty good for him. Yeah, looks like Demet is going to be on that six pick again. And there's the fairy for Flower Man. No surprises. He does have that pocket Matera in the back. And Matera, uh, especially... Matera is maybe in a weird spot because she actually uses all three mechanics really well. So she has to make some harder decisions about how to spend her meter. Matera in Overdrive, though. I think she's one of the actual terrors in Overdrive. I think Fairy, Matera, uh, Jita... This character, Six, and, uh, you know, Sorys, as we saw with Mars. A lot of those characters do some really, really scary stuff with Overdrive. All right, underway here. Demetrius using the air fireball, trying to approach. Timer's down, so he's actually going to take his time. I really like this. Nice anti-air, and he's going to get the full combo. Looks like Flower Man to me. Ready to go already. Backing off, looking for the parry. No bite for Demetrius. Oh, I got the wrong name here. I, I had a little zap up there. Hold on a second. 
There we go. All right. Fix that. Flower Man, pretty healthy life lead here. Only about half meter. Oh, yeah. Try to anti-air again. This time the angle was a little bit worse for it. There's another anti-air, though, and got the far 5M. Working on that meter. Almost topped off. Curious to see if Flower Man is going to pop overdrive quickly. Not even going to get the opportunity to, actually. Would have been able to burn super there, close it out, but going to spend the Man. Beppo. Man, I come back and fairies on screen during Pride. This is yeah. discrimination. <laughs> I don't care that Marvin is just mm -hmm. as gay as I am, but... Got the anti-airs. Yeah, that's... Well, you know, I'm going to say it every time. I know I say it every stream. I'm still going to say it every time. Flower Man has told me multiple times that Fairy cannot just mash sweep in neutral now. And every time and he does, does it, it, it works. Not only does he do it, but it works. Every time he does it, it works. Hate crime ass character out here. You're oh, like this is scary. Incel is up and she has all of her timers. Yep, that's going to close out game one here. Flower Man looking pretty clean right now. All right, back in. Flowerman using the far buttons here. There's the sweep. There's another sweep. <laughs> I mean, this is a thing that Flowerman really excels at when it comes to, especially this matchup. Six has options to get in against Fairy, but Flowerman has learned how to play the wall very well, which makes him dangerous, especially against like another six player. Yeah, and something I honestly don't think we bring up a lot is Flowerman's reaction speed is actually very good. He's he's got very fast reactions. He's able to see the wall jump and get that anti air very consistently. Gonna get the knockdown here? No, he's actually gonna burn the super. There's a lot of scaling. Oh wow, never mind. I thought there was scaling. Maybe the ball super just doesn't do a ton of damage because that close five H still chunked. Flower Man on set point. Yeah, shout outs to that auto captioner recognizing the term 5H. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Nice run under. That is one of the good ways. If you see that dive kick utilized in neutral a lot, if you run under it, you can get a pretty hefty punish on it. Oh, good use of the 5U. Bypasses the sweep there. Going to get in here overhead from pretty far away. Caught with the sweep, though. This time lets the parry go. Yeah, very good parry call out on that. Managed to hit both Beppo and Fairy. Yeah, unfortunately, now he's under pressure. Doesn't have parry. Good throw tech is going to run into the sweep, though, and a little too early on the close 5H. Uh, might be it, especially depending on how Flower Man caches. He's going to go for the mix up here. Yeah. This is basically like the equivalent of that Bears tweet where it's like, my zone, my, my BMB will likely kill. I'm going to do a reset instead. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you want to do cool stuff. Flower Man is very transparent. He's very open about the fact that his favorite part of the game, of any fighting game, is set play. Maybe he did just rather want to do set play. <laughs> it's more fun to him. Let it rock. Good I, stuff to him, though. He's going to move on to the winner semis where he's, oh, gross, he's going to fight me. Never mind. Not good stuff to him. It's all right. You got to play Mars. You got to play Flower Man. It's yeah, just, this is this is bad times all around. We're in the bad time zone. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Speaking of, uh, yes. uh, I guess if you want to go ahead. Yeah, let me go beat the brakes into him. Mars and Seth coming up next. Going to be followed by myself and Flower Man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth. Seth. What did you want? Gonna be joining me, Fireman on the microphone. Welcome. Hello. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Hello. 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 How you doing? She was amazing. How you liking the How you liking the patch so far? Um. So like, I've honestly like I haven't been playing like. Well, I, I, well I've been playing, but like, I haven't been like laughing because I've just been having fun with like using the mechanics. So like sometimes I'll just do like head ass stuff <laughs> what do you what do you think the what do you think is good for fairy right now like uh overdrive seems like it's pretty good for her overdrive and back jump 
definitely. Does she have a good back shift or does she have the bad one? She has the bad one because okay. she has a reversal, but um. I didn't know because she has the slow reversal, right? Like, um, I, don't, I don't know where they cut it off. Like, yeah, I was confused about that, too. Like, Loane has a parry. Does he have the bad one? Because his parry sucks. Like He has the fast one. I was like, Okay, Whoa. that's good for him. I mean, I mean that, that, that's it's the correct thing to do. It's the, yeah. moral, the moral thing to do. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was definitely thinking, like, when I heard a back drift, I was like, wait a second. But then I thought about it. I'm like, not everybody's just the same across the board. I so, do, like, they I, definitely I mean, cater to, like, the characters. Yeah, have, I do like, honestly think backshift is, like, the weakest of the new mechanics, too. Uh, uh -huh. Part of that is just because the other two are really strong. Uh, Rush yeah. is very good. Uh, Rush is good in multiple ways, too. It's good as a hit confirm tool. It's good as a mash out of pressure. Mm -hmm. it, it is invuln on frame four, so it's not invuln right away. Right. But if you get counter hit out of the startup, you don't lose the meter. So you can, right. like, try to to mash rush and if you're wrong whatever yeah um i also think rush like i think so like characters like matera right characters who didn't have like the dp I i'll say mainly just like her because i think she's the only character who truly didn't have anything on defense she didn't have a five frame yeah right? even her super was slow yeah super was slow didn't have a five frame didn't have a dp so i'm like i think a character like her always i well, that just helps her the most. I, I mentioned that, that earlier. I do think one of the hard parts for Matera is she uses all three mechanics really well. Yeah. So I think me, I think your decisions on how to spend your meter as Matera are yeah. actually way harder than most characters. Because most characters have, like, one of the mechanics is really good for them. Or, yeah. like, Rush and Overdrive are really good for them, right? Where. Mm -hmm. You know, Fairy, Fairy seems like Overdrive's probably the best for her just because she can make you block a lot of normals and, you know, chip you from far away. But... Uh, you know, I haven't seen a lot in terms of rush from Fairy. So there's actually some funny stuff I've been doing. Uh, you know how like sometimes like while I have them like in the corner and Gigi's on top of them. Yeah. And like we're both having to stare down before Gigi pops. If I do a button into rush, I can jail them into a true fifty-fifty. Oh yeah, because you can set off the GG right after the rush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's and you're, and you're I'm like. Can you get JL from there, from the spacing that it leaves you at? Can you, like, JL yep. right there? Oh, God, that yep. is good. I was like, it's a 250-50. Uh, um, I want you to show that, but not in the next match. Don't use it against me. <laughs> use it against whoever you play after me. And then then, then I'll be like, wow, that's cool. If you use it against me, I'm going to be like, this character sucks. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Uh, who's another character I think really benefit? I think Matera and Overdrive is almost like a boss character. Uh, the, characters, the characters, I think, that are crazy in Overdrive, Zeta is ridiculous in overdrive pogo you you block all of pogo and then she lands and she does close five them into five u and the five yeah. u does chip now that is so much chip I'm uh, good Lord. i think jita is crazy in overdrive but rush is very good for her so you don't see overdrive as much the big thing for jita in overdrive is far 5m which is you know a very good neutral button right if you buffer the easy input super you get the full animation Wow. From any like anywhere basically, so that's that's over 4K. You get 40 percent for a single 5M uh, reliably. So I think Jita Jita is very good. And Jita with Rush, but yes, that's why you don't see it that often. Jita with Rush, oh she gets her three Rekka string into the wall bounce from like from where player one starts. If you get hit there, she gets the, she gets the full wall bounce. And it's it actually does crazy. So much damage. Yeah. So um, much. I do think who else for overdrive? Sorry's in overdrive. He already Sorry's, did a lot of chip. Yeah. Plus the fact that he can still use his install if he has low enough health. I think install characters are very good in overdrive because like they can kind of like keep it. Like I, I'll talk about this a lot with like using it for chip reasons. But yeah. I think not only does it help the zoners like Matera, Fairy, and like um, I was talking with like some other people. They think uses with overdrive is really good because of his chip. Also, he doesn't have to worry about his timers ever. He can skill button. He never has to charge shot. Yep. He can skill button his shot, and his timer is, like, always back instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's one of the coolest changes about uh, Overdrive specifically mm -hmm. is it makes the easy input version of specials have the same recast timers as the real ones. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a DP... Dude, I'm mashing skill button DP, and it's coming. it yeah, comes back right away. Yeah, it comes back right away, like... Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, like, the crazy part I always say is, like, I think it helps zoners, like, a lot with characters with a lot of projectiles. But I also think it helps fight them very well. So, like, if you're if you're in a life lead versus a zoner, right, and, like, you're, like, sitting, like, near full screen, fairies throwing out GG, Matera throwing out Butterfly, 
take that chance to overdrive. Yeah, and then you don't you have to do worry about chip. Take chip at all. So like they're forced to take a risk. It, it's an interesting mechanic because I think if you both are kind of like at half health, it's right. not that great. But I think if you either have a giant life lead or a giant life deficit, it's mm -hmm. very good in both of those situations because mm -hmm. it takes the chip off the table so they can't make up the life lead you have. The damage increase is great. You, you, know, you already know what it's like to get hit by cat M thrust, right? Like counter hit with M thrust. That does like 8.4 now. If you get hit by the full counter hit M thrust combo, she gets like 80% for that now. The overdrive damage is actually crazy. Oh, we're going to have Mars for Seth. Uh, Seth is going to go with the Lediva. Uh, this, this is always sort of a rough matchup for him because Mars also played this character a pretty good amount at mm -hmm. launch. He'll have uh, a good understanding, but the new mechanics, not not just Rush. Rush is very good for Lediva, but very the new good. walk speed buff yes. is very good for her. The, the main thing that those two things amount to is she can walk up and uh, she can walk up and 5M you. 5M was an incredible neutral button already, but she didn't have good conversions really from it from far away, and now she right. does. We'll see if Seth gets an opportunity to use it, though, because this is hard. Plus frames everywhere for yes. Sorys. Gets the knockdown, tried to back shift, ran back oh. into the 5H. Oh, so Sorys can actually, like, RPS with, like, um, 5U if she decides to go for another one. But it's because your series, like, so much risk because, like, you see Seth just command grab Sorys. Yeah, yes. having a command grab is, does help a lot against Sorys just because it takes yeah. the 5U off the table. Oh. And there is the speedy super scooped, and Seth going to take round one. <laughs> one thing I will say about the Diva, I love, like, the little animations they made when they, she kicks you in the face. <laughs> you know what? I, I do think that's something that isn't uh, touched on enough in this game. <laughs> if you look at still frames of the faces in the middle of the moves, the, the links they went to on the faces are actually incredible. There's a, when Jita gets knocked down, she, like, gets up and brushes herself off, and she's, like, ch she huffs, <laughs> like, ready to fight. It's so sick. This round is really... Really yeah. So, oh, that's dead. Oh my god. Wow, the perfect. So like that was like a perfect example of like kind of like the matchup. I even talked with Mars about it. They think that it's like slightly. Yeah, and Mars favorite. went to character select immediately. I wonder who now pick. he has been working on a Cagliostro in the background. Really? I've seen it a few times. Uh he again, he I'd be surprised if he chose the mirror just because Seth is gonna have oh were one of his buttons set wrong? Oh, check those buttons. Check the buttons. I always check my buttons triple, quadruple if I have to. My yeah, button. and also, uh, kind of important, you can see there he does have an overhead macro uh, oh. a set. If you're trying to overdrive uh, and you're on pad, you probably want uh, a macro set for overdrive yeah. because the input is guard button plus overdrive. You know what I will say? I'm thinking about this as like a competitive tactic now. I think I'm gonna leave like a button that I don't use set to something, and if I lose game one from now on, I'm gonna go back and act like I only lost because my buttons were like I, I'm gonna unset that one button, and I'm gonna make because because to me that's like an oh no moment when you smoke someone game one. Oh okay, he's checking it real quick. Ah, button check, button check, button check. When you smoke someone game one, and they're like, oh, I didn't even have this button set, then I'm like, uh oh, uh oh. I yeah. thought I was cooking. Am I not cooking? Yeah. I definitely am one of those things. Like, even, like, a combo breaker, right? You'll probably see, like, I'm literally scrolling up and down four times. Oh, yeah, I do it three times. Uh, yeah, three, three times four, every five, time. six. I don't care if my opponent Absolutely. gets Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I'm, like, on top of that, can we do a button check? <laughs> you just got to make sure. Because, like, you might not always fight, like, that nice person when, like, oh, their buttons were wrong. So, like, yeah, we can reset the score. No. Well, oh, I mean, if you're at a major, like, combo breaker, uh, you don't have a choice. Yeah, they, no. they, the rules specifically say you lose the round. Lose. They, they they don't allow a situation where you can sort of get peer pressured into letting it rock, right? They just right. have a tight rule. But Mars is locked into the stories. His buttons are set. Let's see if this works out a little bit better for him because he kind of got cooked in that first game. Yeah. I, I, I'm saying even buttons aside, Yeah. he, he got perfect. <laughs> yeah, that last round was really dominant. I know Lediva, like we said before, Lediva really benefits from, like, counter poking into Rush now. Yeah. Oh, there's oh, a hard knockdown. Oh, oh, caught the jump too far for the bounce, but okay. Oh, that was a drop. It's okay. Hard knockdown back to mid-screen, plus frames. Plus frames again. Mm-hmm. Waiting on that timer to come back for the Rush punch, and there's that 5U. Did get in time for the block. 
Now, that's something that I notice Mar isn't willing to do as much in this matchup is because Rush. Oh, there we go, right there. Just like yeah, all the way to the corner, a little too far. Oh. But something. Oh, they're starting to use it now. So the Rush Punch, right? Rush Punch doesn't leave Sora's plus, but it does leave him minus enough the, to where. The medium does leave him plus one. It does, but it could be interrupted. Yeah. It, I think it might even be able to be grabbed. Oh, Woo! oh what the? No, hold on. This was actually something that uh, Ladiva players were talking about, and Seth was talking about. There's some sort of funky property with the hurt boxes of EXSPD that'll like reel back out of a lot of buttons. Seth? Gonna, oh, oh, I was about to say he gambled it on the sweep. I was about to say he's going to have to find an opportunity to uh, either use rush to establish pressure or pop overdrive because chip was becoming an issue real fast. Yeah. So is when the, the lower the health you have, the scarier he gets. Oh, nice go. counter poke. Oh, good duck on the lariat. Going to get the full punish. Hard knockdown into the plus frames. Yeah. Lots of plus frames. Good tech oh, by Seth. Nice tech, though, yeah. Oh, big jump in. Oh, the reset. And I think he can get the side switch here. No, oh. not. You know what? This is fine. If, if you're Mars, this is okay. I really like that back walk on wake up because it made it so Seth didn't cross up and get the corner from that. Yeah. Plus frames. Oh, yeah. big counter hit. Seth trying to find an opening. The rush whiffs. Oh. And that's going to be it for game two. So something that I noticed that um, Mar doesn't do a lot against Ladiva, but he's starting to use it now, is that Suarez is a plus unless he does the medium one, right? But he's in a range where he has to make more RPS because he's either going to do the little, like, absorb move and Ladiva can command grab it, even before the shockwave comes out as a true punish. Yeah. But it's, it's like, do you risk playing that RPS with Ladiva? Because all it takes is one command grab. I think Mars is, as a person, relatively comfortable in his defense. I think he's fine to put himself in a situation where he has yeah. to block. Partially because Soris actually doesn't have to block in those situations. He can just mash 5U. Yeah. Oh, that's plus. Oh. Yeah, that was a brave check. Seth trying to make something happen here. Going to oh, be yeah. down around, though. Mars on the match point. That was a really hard comeback. That, that's when the, the Lariat... Dice rolling gets hard because sometimes you need that stray lariat hit, right? Or or you yeah. need it to get blocked so you can just start some pressure. Headbutts caught with the second one. Nice um, confirm. Sometimes, like I say, like with a diva, like it just takes one command grab, right? But like how Mars is playing, it's like he's not willing to just give that command grab up for free. But there has been instances. Yeah, Ooh. like that right there. Like right, yeah, it's. Definitely, if you have the bar, it gets you out of the situation. I don't even think Ladiva can OS from that range, too. Oh. She has to be really close, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, uh, Sorry's also is going to have one of the 20-frame recovery back shifts. He's going to have one yep. of the good ones. So, actually, I believe against oh. those, she has to just hold that. Oh. Seth in trouble here. Doesn't really have meter and oh. going to get the... Chip is really scary Yeah, Chip right is here. an issue. Going to use that. the invuln there from the rush. Oh, rush. Mars the moving on the winner's finals. Invuln, new mechanic that they added. All right, well, I got to play my match and strive. I will be back. Hold on. You got to play. Uh, oh, we play. Yeah, we gotta, you got to play me. Oh, okay, come on. Right. Trying to run away to strive, running from me. All right. I don't know if we actually have anyone to hold down commentary at the moment. All right. Seth is coming back. Oh, Flower Man actually, I think, has to play in Strive. Seth also has to play in Strive. So I'm going to stay here. Let's see if we can run a loser's match. Yeah, looks looks like we're gonna move down to losers. Using, it's actually a, a pretty big, pretty noisy venue. 
uh, to give you guys a look, uh, the TO running this bracket is actually like all the way. Uh, if if you look in the back here, speaking of board games coming up here, uh, Seth is like all the way at the other end. We're talking in Discord. Board games coming back up. Going to be going against Lil Zap. I need to find a cable to plug my phone in. My phone's dying. Bro, I have like 5,000 cables in my ADARC bag and none of them are, are USB-C. All right, hopefully, hopefully my mom doesn't need to call me. My mom's chilling. She's, she's probably watching the wheelie cam. I had a pretty good shot of uh, during one of the breaks in Combo Breaker. Uh, my mom was coming over a few times today to feed Willie. Uh, so we were on like downtime ad break and you could kind of see her uh, her hand come in like you just see this disembodied hand come in and like giving him scratches giving him pets and he's just lapping it up All right, so we're gonna take a little, a uh, little bit of a break down to the loser side while we're waiting for Flower Man to finish his strive match. I'm gonna hope that Flower Man forgets how to play Grand Blue for a few minutes after he gets Strive Brain, and maybe, maybe I can get an upset here in the next match. All right, board games versus Little Sap. Uh, both these players uh, seemed like kind of in the same position a little earlier, you know, uh, feeling their way out a little bit newer at the game, uh, getting some knowledge checks in. Good check with the 2M into the EX low shot. Lil Zap trying to fight out of the corner, but board game's keeping him pinned down right now. Burning the EX, but teleported into a hit there. Lil Zap taking the opportunity to get out. Board game's pretty aggressive with the teleports, trying to get that jump scare. See it again there. Is that close enough? No, too far for the grab. Lil Zap gets a punish. Hard knockdown. Has meter to work with. Oh, no. A little bit of a misinput. Doesn't need a big punish, but does lose the meter. Lil Zap, though, still in a pretty good spot here. Going to close out the round. All right, the important thing is everyone stayed light, uh, alive long enough for ex existence to get to the high part. What's up, Hero? I hope you're doing well. Board games letting the sweep rip. No bite. Puts himself in the corner with the dive kick, though. Lil Zap taking advantage. Gets the throw for the hard knockdown. Runs into a DP, though. Board games trying to find the way out of the corner. Able to get it. That is actually so, uh, it doesn't come up very often, but one of the weaknesses for multi-hitting air normals is actually if you get a counter hit, the the hits after the first one sort of consume that extra traditional Arxis like in hit stun until the way down float. Oh no, wrong super, that's gonna whiff. Lil Zap not ready for the punish, still pinned down in the corner. Gonna run into a stray shot there. The feathers doing work, board games evening up the round count. Nice. Uses the 5U teleport. Going to sneak behind Matera. Get a punish. Finds a reset with the Karma. Hard knockdown with the fireballs. Put himself into the corner. Does collect a hit, though. And, yeah, just going to zip right out. All right, board game's wilding out with the teleport a little bit. Woo! That, like, stayed in place. I don't know if it was because just the corner or... 
Zap finding a throw, though. Going to get the hard knockdown, but again, the brust out DP. Board game's not looking to hold the pressure. Does have that command grab super on deck. Also, it just has the regular super on deck, which is kind of scary to begin with. That goes through projectiles pretty well. Lil Zap, though, fighting, but runs into the command grab. Game one, going to go to board games here. Zap definitely had like a little bit of a like, oh, crap. <laughs> as soon as you saw the command grab come out. Back in for game two. Board games still doing a good job using this 5U to get around the zoning. Gets a chunk of damage, has the corner. Hard knockdown here from the throw. Another one. Sticks with the meaty. A little bit too far there. Board games though, a lot of corner control. Pretty healthy life lead here, a lot of meter. Zap gonna have to be careful with that approach because that command grab is still there. Now good avoidance of the air shot. Check him with the 2M. All right. Board games though, able to get that 5M, close it out, moving on to match point here. Oh, wow. Raw 2 1 4. Round start. Able to shut down the hop. Zap, though, trying to hold this positioning. Working towards the corner. Has the hard knockdown. Looking for the DP. No bite from board games, though. Is going to check. Find the hard knockdown. All right. Zap trying to establish some zoning here. Burning the EXs. Double hop into the empty low. That was tricky. And using the rush out of the clash. Nice decision there. Able to get the knockdown. Matera does make pretty good use of rush as well. Uh, you know, we had talked about earlier in the stream how good her back shift is and also how good she is in overdrive. Something I think that maybe hasn't been pointed out yet. Matera has incredible medium normals. Her far 5M, her 2M, her jump M, her close M, all of them are very good. And from those grounded buttons, it gives her a lot more hit confirms that she didn't have before. I think her buttons would not have been so overlooked as neutral tools if it wasn't for the fact that she didn't really have like a conversion from them from far away. And now she can actually do that with Rush. Board game, though, does find the Super Skybound. Going to get a lot of damage from the animation here. Anyone's game. Moving in, JL. JL back at you. And in the scramble, Zap finds the round staying alive. We we fell through a volcano, I think. Okay. Round start 2 1 4, working out again for board games. Karma interrupted, though, by the EX Fireball. Nice movement using that JU. All right, and Zap finding the hard knockdown, but again, doesn't believe that board games is going to let it rip, and board games keeping it aggressive here. Going for the grab, bit of a whiff, but Lil Zap jumps back into the corner. Plus frames. All right, command grab going to hit. Uh-oh, SSBA, this is going to be some chip. Too far to punish, most likely. Board games, though, still in the driver's seat here. Pretty healthy life lead. Okay, counter hit. Going to get the knockdown here. Probably most importantly, Zap is building meter for a rush. He has meter for either rush or back shift. I think. Think Zap, Zap took that with the 5H. Yeah, I couldn't tell actually what won there for a moment, but Zap going to even the round count or the yeah, game Zap, count. Zap telling you it back up really well. Like, And Matera has options in this matchup. It's just a matter of like if you're able to – it's a matter if you're able to execute because she has just as much, if not the same, mobility that Beelzebub does. So a lot of it really just depends on how well she deals with some of the pressure options and how she gets in and out. Yeah, I think you brought up a really good point there that uh, Matera known for her very slow walk speed but good air mobility, and Beelzebub is basically exactly the same. Oh, good check, holding his ground. Final counter hit confirmed too. Oh, the back throw though, looking for the karma. Ooh, out of there. I definitely think that was a bait for Wake Up SSB or Wake Up SBA. Yeah, it did hit earlier, so... We'll definitely be looking for it, but the overhead going to take it. Board games once again on match point, but Zap has been in this situation already before. Let's see if he can bring it back again. Absolutely, and the thing we see here too is 
Board Games is getting so much mile mileage on Knockdown, Teleport, Media Overhead. The Teleport in general, he's actually getting a lot of mileage of. And, you know, that's just one of those, we talked about the knowledge checks, kind of that, that Zap as a newer player is failing here and there. Some of that is recognizing the teleport tendencies. If Beazelbub is really going for it, there's recovery after he teleports. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's going to hurt. Dead, but it's going to hurt. Hard knockdown as well. A lot of meter on deck. Uh, Karma. That could have been it. I don't think he was paying a little bit of attention to his meter baron, but he's in such a good position right now that the wrong decision just happened. And that is going to close that out. Board game staying alive in the loser side. <sighs> Okay, so uh, waiting to find out if we are uh, gonna stay in losers or if it's gonna be myself and Flower Man. Is Flower Man still over in Strive? Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't see this light in our face I, is I actually see, too bright. I see him, but he is still seated. He's he's get his opponent just put his stick away. He should be over here in a minute. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll man stations here. Probably going to be Flower Man versus myself then. Yeah, he's coming over here. All right. All right. It's me. I am. I'm running stream now. Uh. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's the save button? Shit, I've been doing this wrong. I've been doing this wrong. Anyway. So, one thing we're about to see is Callisto versus Flower Man. This is a pretty common... A pretty common scenario in terms of how we look... In terms of, like, what our match structure looks like. Uh, Callisto, very strong player, but... Unfortunately, like is put right up against one of the best players. So it's a little bit unfortunate in terms of what's going, in terms of just kind of the draw you get. Well, we're getting set up. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, whatever the YouTube people do. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, gang, I'm not, I'm, I'm doing my best here. It's been a weird week and uh, you know. <laughs> no one saw what just happened. Hey, listen, no one saw what actually just happened, so Fireman just flipped me the bird. How disrespectful. And let me go. Oh, shit. Ah, you can only see me, and I. Uh, it's fine. Fuck, god damn, son of a. Alright, let's get them set up. Get everyone taken care of. I don't know if we're going to get a general button check or not. Both these players are pretty confident in what they're hitting, so we'll see exactly what's going on. So I'm actually really curious to see how this is going to go because Cat, the buffs that Cat got, I don't, I can't necessarily say exactly how. Uh, how effective they are in this matchup. They do bring her back. A, they do give her a lot of general options and better things to do in terms of how she plays. And I think that Cat Fairy is already a matchup that she did. She didn't do bad in. The way Cat Normals work really make it so that Fairy has to be careful where she does and doesn't poke out buttons. So you see that happen. You see things just not go the way they need to. And then cat hits you and you do eight bill like get hit for eight billion damage and it's just kind of a bummer so starting off let me go ahead and get the match intro that way everything is good one thing i can definitely say about callisto that sets him apart especially in terms of the people who still play this character is his usage of of m thrust is really well thought out and considered he's good at he's good at setting it up and using it kind of if he hits, he's going to convert, and if he doesn't, then he's at a point where you can't really punish him, or if you do punish him, you're getting a light off of it. So Now at this point, and this is what you really... This is what you really see when it comes in terms of how Callisto has to play this, because 
the correct hit and into the corner, this is where this is where Catalina does really well in this matchup. She has a lot of options, but as you can see right here, just general pokes really will shut down a lot of the options that she has, or will shut down a lot of options that Fairy has. And this area you're in right now is the that's the it's the cat danger zone. You do not want to fuck around here because it will go real south real quick. But Flower Man using the GG mix to smartly get out of the corner. Excellent, excellent idea of understanding. I don't want to be here. I should get out. And this is what I'm talking about when I say that. When I say that I think that Fairy's game plan is just kind of like, oh, that was just a bad, bad situation. Callisto kind of came down, didn't have enough time to really. If he did come down, he messed up the trip guard or he got hit with a trip guard and it just did not go the way that he needed it to. But expect this match to kind of continue at this pace because the way things are at this moment, Cat really only needs about two hits in this, but getting those two hits is a bit of a hassle depending on how the fairy is playing. Flower Man's perfectly content to keep away and just work his way in and out to the way he's not getting hit and then getting... Oh. These input errors are a little bit unfortunate, but it's just kind of the side effect of the way the new patch is. You do something funny, you're going for a ride. We talked about it earlier, but the new input buffer is a uh, huge... The new input buffer is a big point of contention for a lot of players right now, especially in regards to dealing with like dealing with their execution, which is unfortunate, but... Callisto, like we said earlier... Like again, like we said earlier, Callisto managing to make use of all the new resources to the best of his ability, but this is still a bit of an uphill battle. Fairy, the general consensus about Fairy this patch is that Fairy did get noticeably nerfed just by the system mechanic. Rush gives you a lot of ways just to not even respect her pressure, and back back um, back shift gets you out of a lot of options with GG as long as you're not back into the corner. So a lot of the things that Fairy is particularly good at got smacked, but the upside to that is she does make really good use of those mechanics on the other on the side that she also has a lot of options from Rush or not Rush but OD. So OD gives her gives her way more chip damage off a character that already does it really well. Gives her access to increased damage and at the end she can just pop install super or pop a different or pop one of her options and just let it rip because and especially for a character that already builds meter as fast as fairy does those options are make or break especially in a patch that she is considered weaker flower man going for the optimal conversion trying to get some damage And dead. I need to go ahead and update this. Flower Man already on uh, set, or Flower Man up to set point, looking to go into winners finals versus Mars, which. I'll be frank, I'm a little curious to see how that's going to play out because Fairy already did not do great against... Say, Fairy already does not do very well against uh, Soriz, but the fact that he now just can do Gon Hanzo Gonzo chip pressure, I think is going to even make this work, especially just with how Mars likes to play fighting games. Oh, God. I like the disrespect behind this. One thing that Callisto, I think, is very good at in terms of this new patch is being comfortable maximizing his ability to... Maximizing how to get the most out of Overdrive, but uh, there it is. So for those of you who are maybe tuning in who haven't seen a lot of the new patch, what Overdrive does is it gives, it gives you chip on normals, and it also makes all of the easy input specials do the exact same damage and have the same properties as non-easy input. So you saw it right there. Uh, Callisto was looking for was looking for the raw meaty, called it out, got a lot of damage, and managed to turn around the game just off that alone. Managing to take his first this is him managing to take his first set in there. So, 
excellent, excellent adaptations. Callisto is definitely someone I would say. I don't want to. I don't want to say that he is slow to adapt, but especially against someone like Flower Man, making those adaptations is not exactly the easiest thing to do. So when we see Callisto make options, he's trying. He's generally making what he sees as the best. So. And this is. And this is kind of unfortunately the the scenario that Callisto has put himself in. Fairy can just sit there and whiff a button, and if he does something wrong, it's it. But Flower Man managing to take it 2-0 over Callisto. All right, up next we have SSK versus Dimitis. Uh, I'm putting that up there right now. Uh. Bro, bro. I know, man. The feeling when you block two fairy mix-ups and then you block for two more seconds, and then she still gets instant overhead into the, the fucking... <laughs> yeah, it's also, I, I got to go back and watch later and figure out what happened on that uh, exchange where Flower Man ended up in the corner. Because I don't know how he got there, and it was a fucking jump scare. <laughs> I, Damn. I, that, that shit hit me with the ooga booga. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why, Damn, dude, why is he in the really corner? I mean, Fairy is technically a ghost, but you really out here... No, yeah, that was that was actual spook... You really out here letting white women scare you like that? The level of spooky ghostness was, uh, uh, back in my day, in, in, in the old, old days, there was a Bert and Ernie, like, audio book. Ryan, we're not that far apart in age. I like, don't you like don't, you 10 don't, years on you. <laughs> you don't have to explain what Sesame Street is. No, this was this was some actual 80s shit though. It was an audio book where ghosts come in and they kidnap fucking Ernie while he's sleeping, and I was terrified. I was mad fucking scared. They made spooky ass noises and shit. Dang, I cannot believe you just gave me a Wikipedia summary of a That is my my Wikipedia articles all say like they did something and shit. Like that's <laughs> You check out Albert Einstein. He's like, yeah, he uh, revolutionized quantum mechanics and shit. <laughs> German uh, born, uh, moved. Uh, <laughs> BX, <for laughs> BX does welcome to the chat. I'm glad that of all the things you came in on, that's what it was. But welcome to Midwest Commentary. They give me a mic and they shouldn't. Yeah. Don't worry. What, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm not doing it for like tomorrow. Uh, one of the days I'm going to do the West Coast online bracket the same day that I do the house tournament for the uh -huh. Midwest. And then I'm going to make all of us commentate the West Coast <laughs> matches. Where It's just going to be... Oh, uh, dude, I'm not going to just going to be gooning. I'm, I'm not going to make it out of that, like, uncanceled. Like, that... I'm going to say some shit I can't. We're going to, uh, we'll, we'll burn the archives. It's fine. Uh, SSK sitting down. Demetis coming up. Uh, curious to see how this goes. SSK uh, did win over Trade War. So has been staying alive in the loser's bracket. Uh, gave me a scare. I feel, I feel like uh, this is almost scripted. I, tell me this. How many times, if SSK wins this match... Tell me this has not happened at least five times where I have to play SSK in winners. I barely beat him, and then you have to play him in losers later in that bracket. Dude, I'm scared for my fucking life. I'm telling you right now, like, we already had to play in you, one. You know what was scary to me? Uh, SSK didn't use any of the new stuff against me. He almost beat the crap out of me just playing, like, last patch Percival. My mans did not even need the Hisatsu no Ogi. He beat your ass raw. Shit was scary, dude. I was, I was Dude, I'm hard. like, this is the thing how it's going to be is. Has, has he gotten you yet? N not yet, right? Uh, he's gotten me in an online tournament, but okay. he hasn't gotten so, me here. He has beaten you in bracket, though? Okay. Are I mean, that, that, like, we're talking about not a Midwest bracket, yeah. but a bracket, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like the integrity, my integrity in the Midwest bracket is untarnished, except for what happened earlier on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for letting my tag rock. I really appreciate you. We we we're liberal with some stuff. We'll let some some stuff fly. Uh, you not, know. not fairy though. Gross. Gross. I'm telling you, we need to just like. We in Chicago need to come up to like whatever that fucking country that banned Lydia from. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need you to. You know just what? I want to. Uh, <laughs> I want to. I want to run. I already sort of wanted to do this, but I wanted to run a Grand Lonely tournament only because I actually think Grand is hella fun, and I really do think that the natural state all fighting games should end up at, especially if you're playing like casuals, you're doing like house matches where you're playing late at night. They should always in end in mirror matches of whoever the main pro tag shuttle is. Street Fighter 4, you have it on, it should always devolve to Ryu mirrors. Grand Blue should always end up in Grand mirrors. Grand is hella fun. I do think he's maybe, not maybe, I, I don't know. I'll let better players correct me if they, they think it's incorrect, but I think Grand is probably bottom one. Um, you, you know that says a lot when I think that Catalina is better than our character in the game currently? Uh, I do. I do think Grant is unjuiced. Uh, a lot of the problems he had for like things that he could not convert from uh, aren't really helped by Rush because Rush also still misses in a lot of those things. There are some situations like uh, if he gets kind of uh, a max range counter hit 2M and he'll get like the tip far 5M. That situation is way better for him. He does get real converts now from that thanks to Rush, but. I don't know. Overdrive is like okay for Grand because he has that 2M pressure. He can sort of hacksaw at you a little bit, but it's just... And I'm not just doing this out of speculation. I actually have played a, a decent bit of Grand this week. I, I, I have been trying to brush up on all three Shotos. I played mostly Cap, but I have played a lot of Jita and a good amount of Grand as well. Uh, Jita is cracked. Jita, Jita feels incredibly strong in this patch. I think she was obviously strong beforehand. I think she was already the best of the three uh, core Shotos, you know, not counting Belial. Uh, but I, I, Jita might actually be as good as Belial now. Uh, all the new mechanics, well, not backshift, but Rush and Overdrive both suit her very well. Going to see SSK stay in here, though, against Demetis. So we are going to see Percival against the Sheesh. Not a matchup I've seen a lot of. Uh, it seems hard for Percival. At least it, players who are experienced playing Percival usually don't have a problem with the stiffness of his movement. They usually do a good job of moving around. Uh, SSK can definitely, you know, zoom around the stage when he needs to. But I do think the, the movement speed disparity between these two characters is pretty gigantic. We'll see if SSK, though, we'll see if he's able to stand his ground. Letting the uses theme rock. We got some cultured individuals on the setup. Oh, uh, yeah, Seth Seth has admitted to the crime. Seth changed it to English voices. SSK just asked me if this was in English. I'm like, it definitely shouldn't be because after that villain Zamu changed it to English voices at Combo Breaker, I immediately, I'm not, the second that they finished giving out the trophy and, and medals and shit, I was on that stage immediately putting the voices back. Good check. On the, the ender there. Going to get a stock here. Spends one on the command dash. The JL active all the way down. Too far to convert, but nice 5H whiff punish. Going to get the Lord Strike. 
Not going to finish just yet. Wasn't an air float, so he didn't have the combo afterwards, but good position here for SSK. What do you mean? How is it confusing that Seth is a grappler player, but also causing English Percy? That's not confusing at all. Grapplers are villains. English players are villains. Everyone's a villain. Makes perfect sense. Ready. Oh. Nice side switch. Wasn't ready for the mash, though. Demetus busting out, trying to keep the pressure up. Has a bit of a life lead here. There's the frame trap. Nice check. SSK not holding these frame traps. Good ch good no challenge there. Didn't try for the anti-air. Dive kick ended up just getting blocked. SSK still alive. Is he going to burn this? Yeah, I don't think this gets animation here. Maybe I'm wrong? No. Okay. Has a lot of stocks to work with, though. Nice. Great, great use of the uppercut on landing. Should get the punish, and SSK going to take game one. Looking good here. A couple of really clutch plays there. After that clash in the air into the EX air fireball, he had a really good heads up play just landing and doing the DP because at that point, Six was already committed, wasn't able to block, even though that DP would have been air blockable on a jump, uh, an empty jump. Finds the throw. 2H wasn't against the airborne, so not going to get the combo. Yeah, this time using the punishable option as a frame trap, partially because SSK has shown the challenge against the plus on block option. Runs into the parry. Demetis hanging in there, but this is probably going to be the round. SSK moving on to match point, and again, SSK not really using the new stuff. He's still sort of like, like playing 2.7 Percival, but he's playing pretty cleanly today. Waits out the DP. What's he going to spend on the punish? Oh, no. Misses the juggle. All right, bust out DP. SSK has a lot of life to make up. Does have three stocks, though. That's going to help a lot. Good check with the 5M. Stopping the 5U approach. Damn it, just though. Sticking to his guns. Used the 5U again. Was able to eventually work in with it. Closes out the round. Trying to stay alive here in losers. Nice parry. Good reaction. Not anything you can do about that. Didn't get the clean hit there, so going to lose out some damage, but does still have the momentum. Let the 2H work. Didn't have really a lot to do from it, though. Just harassing with the 5M. That's what I like to see, SSK. Do the thing that's working. Just keep pushing the good button, and there's the DP. Going to close it out. Demetis taking seventh tonight. Liked what I saw from him several times, though. Looking pretty good. Uh, excited to, you know, always excited to have new Grand Blue players here in Chicago, and looks like he's been playing for sure. SSK, stay there. Also, can you fix the voices? Can you fix the voices? But also stay there. All right, all right. SSK, gonna gonna repair these broken voices on my PlayStation 4. So he's gonna stay on. Uh, loser's quarters going to be Seth and SSK. I think so, Hero. I, I think I think I would count you as a new. If you told me you were going to play Grand Blue after the day that you showed up and entered, then yes. I would be excited to see you playing Grand Blue. I'm excited to see most people playing Grand Blue. Not Flower Man. He plays Fairy. All right. Let me see if I can track down Seth. Wandering around, dude. I can't see past my own lights. My light is too fucking bright. It's blinding. I probably have a tan now. No, I'm still pretty white. Never mind. The light's not that good. 
Shit's bright though. Well, thank you, Mubot. Speaking of people getting new into Grand Blue, look at Mubot with the time, timely announcement here. Uh, if you are checking out Grand Blue, uh, if you want to net play it, it is recommended to play it on the PC version if that's an option for you. Uh, but uh, you can check out the NAPC Discord. Lots of kind folks there help you learn the game. I'll probably tell you that I'm going to hit you a sweep into Super on Wake Up, and then I'll actually do it because I don't tell lies in the Discord. Oh, who do I have to play? I have to play board games. I don't see him either. Board games is in KOF. Seth is in, Graham, Seth is in Strive right now, and board games in KOF. Okay, whoever gets out first, just send him over. Yeah. All right. Yeah, board games is in the KOF bracket. Uh, Seth is in the Strive bracket. So we're just waiting on a moment here. Thankfully, I plan ahead for these types of things. Here's a cat. We did it. Great job, everyone. Good work looking at this cat. He's looking pretty majestic right now, honestly. Yeah, he can feel the vibes all the way at home. He's a good boy. I'm, I don't know. I, I'm i trying to do the whole, you know, go out to tournament things, have fun playing games. I, I very much would like to be at home with the cat. That's all I do. The Steam Deck came in. I can lay on the couch with the cat on top of me, play a JRPGs. Life's good. But between the Switch and the Steam Deck, there's basically... No Final Fantasy game that I can't play on the toilet. The, you know, even though the whole world's on fire right now, there, there's some plus sides to the whatever this weird dystopian future we have is. All right, let me see what else we got. Winner's final is going to be Flower Man and Mars. Let me see if I can find the, the schedule here for... FGC meetups. Uh, I did mention earlier it has gone to a bi-weekly for tournaments, but it is still a weekly event. Uh, we actually just do alternating now, casuals on one week, and then five tournament games that will rotate through different games. When do we get to play Trails? Didn't you tell me that Trails only has an English dub or something? Or did, did it just have no voice acting at first? That's acceptable. If it's dub only, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Rune Factory 5 is a thing. You know, fucking gas is six bucks a gallon, but hey, I can play Stardew Valley on like seven machines. Shit's sick. That's not even a joke. Gas is actually six bucks a gallon in Chicago. I, shit's scary. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll ch I'll check out Trails eventually. Honestly, I've been uh, I've been replaying. Uh, thanks to the Pixel remasters, I was like, fuck it, I'll just I uh, not just the Pixel remasters, but also the Switch ports of uh, seven, eight, nine, and such. I basically just am replaying all Final Fantasies, and then once I catch up through all that, I'll check out Trails. I've heard good stuff. From my good friend who I know in person, the Mask of Barona. I know none of you know who he is because he's a mysterious fighter, but uh, I actually am pretty tight. Clues me in on the good stuff. All right, so we'll see. We'll see if Seth, first of all, I think he is going to go with the Oliva pick. Oh, no. Okay, going to go to the six. I'll have to ask later. I'm not sure if he specifically doesn't like that matchup for Lad or if he just, you know, kind of wants to be a wood chipper for a few minutes. Coliseum, really? 
Really? This is Stockholm Syndrome. Two years of net play, you can't find another stage now? I picked the forest stage because Rose Queen makes kissy faces at me. It's great. SSK backing off at the start. Jumps back in over the fireball. Going to get a counter hit here. Hard knockdown. Is he going to do three? Yeah. Always an interesting choice when you get that EXDP thing early in the round. You can either do the three stock and get a little bit of pressure, or you can just do the EX, get five stocks, give up pressure, and not have to worry about it for a while. Doesn't get the clean hit. Pretty good lead here for SSK, though. And that, I think, is going to close the round. Yeah, doesn't even need the SBA. Good block on the Rekka. Taking the turn with the far 5L. Ooh, tried to anti-air with the 5M. Didn't quite work out. Seth with the grab. Oh, that must have been an accident. Went for the back throw. Definitely don't think he meant to bring SSK out of the corner. Oh, good patience. Gets the DP out. Resets with the overhead. And that's enough with the EX. I actually thought he might have wanted to burn the SBA, but... Nice routing there. Ended up being enough to finish the round. One apiece. See who's going to take game one here. Seth gets the pressure started early. Has the hard knockdown with the grab. Counter hit. 2M against the crouching. Going to give that full EX fireball route. And SSK getting bullied in the corner a little bit. Going to bust out, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about earlier. Going to go ahead and spin the EX. Now he's going to be safe on those Lord Strikes. Using the empty dash. That's good for him. Shuts down the Rekka. Does have to watch out for the parry. Now that's out as well. Seth, healthy lead. Is out of timers. SSK can go for the Oki because there's no parry available. And he has stocks. Going to burn the SSBA here. Maybe animation because it's in the corner. Yes, he is going to get it. Full auto combo starter. So is going to scale the damage a lot. But with what he has, he has two stocks. He can ooh, overdrive. Chip on normal is going to be an issue. Nice dodge, but still, Chip is definitely an issue right now. Gets over the Rekka, but he has to find a hit, and that's going to close it out. Seth taking game one. All right, hard knockdown. Get some stocks. Gonna let the DP rip. SSK playing aggressive and finds the meaty 5H into SBA. And it's enough getting another roundup. Counter hit by the Rekka. Seth gonna get the hard knockdown into the corner here. Good check with the 5M. Busting out. Has two stocks to work with. Spends one there. Spends another. Gets parried. Busting out again. Is he going to do the EX? Yes. All five. Wants a lot to work with here. Nice counter hit. Confirm. Dangerous territory for Seth. There's a lot of stocks there. Blocks the Rekka. Good check on the dash through. Not quite enough to close it out, but SSK with a pretty commanding lead right now. Good block. SSK needs one hit, trying to close this round out. I'm sorry, I lied. He needs two hit. Great anti-air, though. SSK getting a game up. All right, Seth, heading back to character select. Probably going to see the lad come out then. Maybe. He might just be taking a moment. Nope, there it is.
this is a bit of a mixed bag for SSK. I do think this is a better matchup uh, for Percival, but also this is Seth's main. Like, there's some minor hesitations that might be in place when Seth plays six from having played that character a little bit less that aren't going to happen with Lad. He's generally going to know what to do in different situations and be ready to pull the trigger when he needs to. SSK drawn first blood. Oh, wow, I got mixed too. Nice, using the EXDP as a punish, and now he's going to have stocks, and now every hit is kind of dangerous for Ladiva for a moment. Unblockable, yep, caught in the air. Using the zoning, another air unblockable. Great zoning by SSK. Nice patience. Big counter hit 5H, though. Seth going to get some opportunity here. Has the corner as well. Great 2H. Oh, this is going to be a big starter. Overdrive. SSK going to have to find an answer. Oh, that's dead. There is no answer. Next round. All that started with just one counter hit in neutral. That walk speed for Lodiva now, it's hard, you know, to keep from getting yourself walked back into the corner. It sneaks up on you. Oh, no. Caught with the Lariat. Not able to get stocked up. Hard knockdown from the sweep. Baits out the DP. This is going to be a rough situation. Actually, went for the reset. This is okay for SSK. Now he has a stock. Doesn't burn it yet. Ooh, missed anti-air. Doesn't pay for it yet, though. Okay, what's he going to do? 2-2-H? Yes. Once the three stocks. Super available for SSK. Runs into the fireball. Okay, that's good hit. Has SBA. Good empty jump there. Baits out the whiff 2H. Seth not out of it. There's the reset into EX SPD. Oh, my God. That killed. Excuse me? What was that damage? Wowie wows. That did a hell of a lot of damage for one, uh, one SPD. Uh, All right, welcome back. Thanks. Uh, it's been a minute. Uh, yeah, that was true input uh, EX SPD. Which yeah, is that like, did hella damage. Uh, 3K. Jeez. Like, especially I'm a little caught up in the moment, but I'm pretty sure that uh, EX DP wasn't there. So I was willing to trade, like, the potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to wrangle board games real quick. All right. See you in a bit. Oh, boy. Uh, hi, friends. It's really a bummer because, like, we just haven't had time to really have both of us on commentary tonight because my stupid ass decided to play Guilty Gear Strive, which I should probably stop doing. Um, anyway, hello. I'm your pal, Seth. Let's go ahead and you don't want to see me. You want to see the players. That ain't it. Uh, there we go. That's what I wanted. Maybe. Players. Oh, I see what he did. He moved some stuff on me. That's why I'm all confused. All right, so we are going to, let me see even what all this matchup Hubble Baloo is, so. All right, I will go ahead and report these scores for this. Man, I gotta play the winner of this, which is. So yeah, this is the last of our losers quarterfinal matches. Um, we are gonna have Callisto versus Board Games. Which looks like we're getting Cat versus Beelzebub. Uh, that's a it's a funky matchup for Cat. I think in general they both kind of have the bigger buttons. 
but his mobility and the ability to like he has a lot of multi-hitting specials and options to use so it's really difficult for her to kind of do some light wall stuff and bust out because any gaps that there would be pressure can usually have a couple of hits to it. And I think for Callisto, especially right now, one of the things we're going to see is one of the things we're going to see is the fact that he is very experienced in this matchup. He's played it a lot, but I do think his ability to use rush and convert all of his tools to work in and get there are going to be really important for for his success into this bracket. Ah, that is an excellent use of overdrive to get out of the wake-up super. I, I didn't think that would work like that, but that was a funny guy interaction anyway. Uh, let me get Folk in the chat to go ahead and get that. Let me get Folk in the chat to go ahead and uh, clip that for me. <sighs> Callisto BMing with everything in his heart out here doing double two. 214 M's. Really testing if you can if you feel comfortable enough to punish it or if he thinks he can get away with it. I think it's a little bit of both, if I'm being honest. But we'll see where everything's going at this point because <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was definitely a moment of did not know the matchup because I, I'll, I'll, I'll cop to this. I've been hit a couple times with Catalina. Well, a couple of the DPs or supers in this game that have multiple hits, and you just get cooked by the wrong one. And it's a huge bummer, but you live and, you, live and you die by the sword. And so we're going right back to kind of the slower poking game that Callisto likes to do. One of the things that I think he... It's like I said, this is definitely... For as much as a Shoto should not be a huge matchup check, Catalina does have some funny guy stuff that she can get away with to do the damage she needs to. And... Board Games has a lot of options and a lot of kind of funny guy setups that he likes to do. So... Oh. That is, no, that's not going to kill, but that's going to do a grip and put Callisto in a really good situation. Especially because at this point, uh, Board Games does not have the meter to really do anything. Yep, wake up DP, block, punish. So Street Fighter Fundamentals, baby. That's what we're here for. Welcome, Melodious. Uh, I, no, I don't know what you're saying, but I'm really glad you're here. So working his way in, one thing I'd like to see, I um, took the words out of my mouth. So say I'd like to see board games leverage dive kick a little bit more. We've really seen only the EX version, but Bubs can change up his timings and really kind of work around. The worst that dive kick can be is minus two. So even at the instance where you have a bit of a bad situation or things just don't go the way you need it to, you have a DP on deck, you have a couple of options to really play around and it's a really good tool to kind of check your opponent and at least close the space. You're not really going to get you're not really going to get pushed out a lot depending on the opponent, but you have to be really careful. That's that is unfortunate. That looks like it's a bit of an input error. <laughs> that looks like a bit of an input error. Board get or er, board games getting around on the board. <laughs> you like that uh you like that wordplay there? I did. So what we saw there is just, it looks like it was probably a bad DP, and Callisto was delaying his timing just a little bit to deal with it and just kind of got clipped. It it happens more than you thought, you'd think, and wake up, wake up heavy button is surprisingly effective when used correctly. So saw it didn't work there, just won that entire round, especially considering that Bubs, Bubs close heavy hits like 18 times, so you having a, you are gaming. I like the use there. Callisto has to be really careful, though. Not only does Bubs have S have SBA on dock, which is the command grab, Callisto makes a really bad button check or doesn't confirm something correctly. Bubs can just go ahead and immediately mash into SSBA and 
unless Callisto was specifically ready and baiting for it, the best scenario is that he... Oh. Oh, that is unfortunate. A bit of a bad input drop from Callisto. That was definitely supposed to be the game-winning hit, but that's not the end of the world. We still got another game. We all get hit. Every now and then you just get hit with a bad input air and some stuff goes all wackety schmackety. So it's not the best. It's Like I said, it's not the best situation, but it's ace it, like it can be dealt with. One thing... One thing I will say is Callisto is very good at kind of leveraging how he mixes up his pressure to get jump ins. And especially right here where he's managing to get the jump in and usually go for the strike throw. He likes to err on the side of throw more than anything else, but oh. <laughs> I was about to say, I think that's Callisto wanting to you gotta right the wrongs of the past to move to the future. Get that hit in, get the correct combo and go. This man's out here coaching in between sets like he's not, like he is not like 1-1. One, one. This could go real funny. But. Looks like board's get, board game is getting a little bit too opportunistic with the teleport. It is a really good tool, but if you know the teleport's coming or you're actively looking for it, unless it's done in a meaty setup, it is very punishable. So... Callisto has to, or I want to see board games make a little bit of an adaptation in here with this. You know, especially as like someone who's a little bit newer, we're noticing a lot where he is not, we're noticing a lot of situations where he's not really using a lot of new mechanics, kind of running a really basic game plan. But depending on that game plan, it can be either effective or not. And I think, you know, we're 1-1. This is not a, well, that's a bad situation. But this is not unlosable, but Melanator's going to have, or board games is going to have to make a really good decision and has to be careful now because normals can chip out, but goes for the raw teleport again and gets stuffed. Callisto going up to one. Going into loser semis versus me. Because I also cannot escape. But he will be right back. I'm going to mark this. So we have got, on the winner's side, we have got Flower Man and Mars. And on the loser's side, we have me and Callisto. So pretty quaint little bracket. We'll probably see a little bit of what's coming tomorrow. And, you know, hopefully it's going to be good. Both of these two. Look at these guys doing after set coaching. You got to love it. <laughs> it's all Cheetah. <laughs> Are we, are we on some bigger Luke stuff here? Like, uh, is this uh, Big Jita? Big, uh, and what? Uh, do we have, like, Belial as Tall Grand or some shit? I don't know. You can get, you can do some real funny stuff, but. Clisto. Ugh. I'm sorry you had to hear that. Clisto on his way back now. No, let my voice rest for a second. Uh, unlike Miss Nancy Reagan, I am not the throat goat, so. I got to rest. All right. So trying to find Flower Man and Mars here. Flower Man and Mars. Yeah. We got okay. And then after that, if you can cover. Mars! Tired of these scripted tournaments. Ryan, I just want you to know that before you got back on, the last thing the viewers heard was Nancy Reagan throat goat, and uh, I hope you're proud of oh, the Oh, that's a fact. Oh, so would have played it? Uh, ah, you want to do it now, though? Yeah, so scripted tournament as as usual. You really wanted SSK to break the, break the cycle, huh? I didn't want you to lose. I just wanted to not have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As is tradition, we have to... Loser semis, myself and Seth. Uh, Seth going to come uh, help hold down the stream. Just hey, so Jeff. everyone knows, this is the bad Seth. No, hey, there is no... Look, I'm the only Seth, okay? I don't know what he's talking about. First and foremost, don't, don't, let, it, don't let it get twisted. Second off, how's it going, chat? I'm glad to see you guys. Um, I haven't seen anything of the Grand Blue Patch. I saw Callisto get some pretty standard, like, 5B into, uh, into over, what is it? 
the FADC. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, but pretty solid confirms into there. I saw Board Games do the super out of his block string, which I thought was really tragic. But, you know, what are you going to do? But at any rate, uh, Callisto and Seth. I believe this is a loser semis match, so it's still going to be the first of two. Um, good stuff to Callisto to take it over Board Games in the last one. We've got, uh, I'm sure he told you, you've got Flower Man and Mars up next in the winner's final. But because Flower Man's playing Strive, going far in both brackets, unfortunately, um, we're going to have to uh, change the order. There's a lot of crossover today, too, which is really cool. We changed the format today. I'm sure Callisto probably told you guys. We changed the format for FTC meetups where it's like uh, now we're running five games instead of three. So it's pretty intense. All right, here we go. Close to Seth. Uh, I don't, hey, chat, I'm going to need an assist on what sex does. Um, but, you know, pretty standard Catalina play. I like how he looks, though. I like the fact that he can, like, instill pressure and then kind of, like, make it safe to an extent. But <laughs> sex. No, look, I didn't say, I didn't say that. I didn't say anything like that. Free standard pressure. Callisto mashes out, brings it back into the mid screen, keeps that going. Callisto is pretty willing to spend his meter for the uh, the rush, for the drive rush. But okay, staying patient. Callisto not overextending, just waiting for Seth to make his move. And then nice, good patience, but actually ended up getting crushed there. Chillin' has him in the corner, doesn't need to overextend, actually gonna get punished there. Not gonna be able to turn that into something. Why does he run like that? Yo, chat, hold on, dude. He scurries like a Scooby-Doo character. This is really funny. Ah, plus frames into the throw, nice. Wolverine from any Marvel. I could tell. And I'm down with that, Wolverine is sick. Berserker Barrage, nice, already gets him into the corner. Oh, the low confirm, but couldn't quite convert. Just going to take the throw. Damn, meaty counter hit crush overhead. Kalissa tried to go for the parry with the throw. Nice. Keeping that safe. He might be dead here. Yeah. All righty. Seth taking a quick game one. Damn, six's damage is kind of nuts, huh? I'm saying zoinks as he runs up to you. <laughs> ruh row when he gets hit. You know what I'm saying? All right, just threw out the sweep on the landing. Going to punish this DP. Going to be huge. Yo! I like that. He got the overhead, but it wasn't counter hit, so he wasn't able to get off much. Callisto, nice. Less the combo limit. Goes in for the meaty. I like that. Oh, Seth tries to mash out. Oh, what a read on the EX, Rekka. Okay, keeps this going. What the hell is Seth's sponsor tag? Look. Yustola is bussin', all right? I'll give you that. But what the hell? Representing that in bracket, it's pretty nice. Okay, tries to get a little greedy. Going in. Oh, he really wants some Scoopy Snacks. He's going in, dude. Overhead, not counter hit, but still able to catch the back dash out. Oh, stuff that. Kalisto should be pressing that advantage now that that is on cooldown. Oh, the overdrive. It's pretty OD. Nice, dude, the rush in Callisto. I mean, he did spend that cooldown, right? He wanted to try to interrupt and get that advantage that he can, but still, the forgotten sixth member of the Scooby gang. <laughs> it's not scrappy. It's six. Sixy do. Nice, run up throw, caught the, caught the spot dodge. Keeping that pressure, counter hit, overhead. Callisto is trying to mash or check that overhead. But not, oh, he mashes out and actually stays alive, but couldn't quite bring it back into the mid-screen. Didn't hold the parry for too long. And he could be dead. Rut roll. There it is. Now, Seth staying alive here. This is first to two, so Seth is up set point. This game should be first to three for real. Oh, God, Seth is just six, does so much damage. Overdrive is just bonkers. Nice check. Ooh, I like the TK dive kick. How many players are here for Grand Blue? I think we had, I want to say something around like 10. I think 10. 
So the Grand Blue regulars, uh, there was a few people that couldn't make it out tonight, unfortunately. I think it was just because of scheduling errors and stuff. Callisto being like, oh, man, reeling back in his chair. Like, I can't believe that didn't catch. Goes for the back throw, though. Going for the stagger pressure, not getting greedy, but the rush down. I like it. This could be, no, he does not have full meter. Again, Callisto does spend a lot on just the rushing. Probably knowing that he's not going to get a lot of reward off of the super and maybe the way that he like wants to take his hits or like get the reward off of his hits. It's not what he wants. He wants to just, he wants to hit you more and be able to still in pressure. Callisto's the type of person who likes to play pretty offensively despite his defensive play style. You know what I'm saying? Like he, what I mean is don't let Callisto's willingness to play footsies fool you. He still wants to rush you down. He still wants to be offensive. Oh, hell yeah. I'll say those clash, those clash frames are way too long, but it's sick. Okay, nice with the throw and actually gets thrown for his troubles. I like the, the shimmy attempt coming out from Callisto. Nice to confirm. Uh, uh. Is he not dead? Okay. Is there a punish on that? What? He actually got swept afterward? That's nuts, dude. Okay, rush down. Point blank rush down. Callisto is nuts, dude. Here we go. Callisto upset point. Is he going to be able to turn this around? I wouldn't be surprised, but I would love to see it. No more horny for Seth. Get him out of here. Nice jump out. His ability to read these EX Berserker Barrages is pretty nuts. Nice whiff, the throw, the rush down. Give me able to do some more damage. He's a magician for real. Nice. Callisto's on next level neutral game. He knows, man. He knows. He's got the meter for another rush down. Okay, EX Berserker Barrage coming out. Gets that poke in. I like the delay pressure coming out from him. He's so close, dude. He's so close. The jump. Oh, no, the one who DD jumped that he actually couldn't get the reward off of. And now Seth, Seth has him in the corner. He got the hit. Oh, no, this is bad. Ex excellent tech coming out from Callisto. Good patience. The back throw, and that's going to do it. Callisto taking it over Seth 2-1. Two, two rounds straight. Let's go. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The one where he didn't have it, he still got away with it. Okay. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna get back on here and talk about their match. Here you go, Callisto's back. Thank you, guys. Thanks, sir. Uh, man, fuck white women. I don't know what he's talking about. You smell that? I'm Smells about like to slap the taste out of your mouth. You don't, you don't smell the pumpkin spice wafting through the venue. All I'm going to say <laughs> is, like, you got me so fucking spooked with a neutral jump when I know I can probably just run up and fucking anti-air. Actually, but you, like, you can just do the Rekka after I neutral jump. That's, that what, I, that's yeah, what I kept trying to do that, is, like, catch you on the way down. But, like, <laughs> it just did not happen. Bro, I'm telling you. I'm going to come up in the venue. I'm going to LeBron James with pumpkin spice. <laughs> I Let's go. I'm going to slap the taste out of your mouth. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't know if I can slap the smell out of your mouth, but I'm going to try. All right. So we are going to have a winner's final here. Going to be Flower Man and Mars versus three. I'm curious about this because Flower Man's been looking really good, but um, this matchup is I... kind of rough for Fairy pre-patch, and I feel like Zori's is more improved than Fairy is. Yeah, I, I have some concerns about this, especially in terms of, like, this, like it's like you said, this matchup was already bad, and I have a sneaking suspicion that with the changes to flower or shit, with the changes to Mars or to Soros's pressure and just how much he gets off the new options. Yeah, like is Fireman going to be ready for that? That said, uh, Flowerman has definitely been labbing options to deal with stuff, but on the other side of it, you really have to be careful in terms of you really like it's. You can only lab so much before you get thrown into it. And that's kind of how I came in today. You and I were playing a lot before this, and it's just like I – a lot of the stuff that I was doing with Rush was largely just shit I saw you do. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's how, how it goes with the new stuff in the patch, right? Sometimes you 
it takes seeing somebody else use the mechanic to be like, wait a minute, why don't I just use it like that? Some of it, like um, the anti-air, right? Yeah. Against the wall dive. I saw someone else do that yesterday, and I was like, oh, shit, that's a good idea. Because it moves forward enough to also sometimes catch the, the fake out. Yeah, I can definitely see that in terms of... Like, it's, Rush is such a weird mechanic. I think it's good, but it's maybe a little too good. Yeah, I don't know. I think the only thing that's too good currently is Media Overdrive. That's... I, th I think the, that's the only... The only reason Media Overdrive is not, like, actually a problem too good is outside of, like, specific auto time setups, it does require frame-perfect execution. You do have yeah. to hit the Media right on the first frame of neutral. And just to make sure, like, is that just a traditional media, or does it guard crush and you can do something after? It They can block it, but they have to block it. Uh -huh. And it's plus 20 on either block or hit. Oh, so it's Garuda. Yes, exactly. It's Garuda, exactly. It, it's Garuda but you can't DP it because mm. it just sort of eats your input on that first frame. Yeah, I think of the mechanics, that's probably the one that's going to get tweaked the most, but we'll see. All right, so Flower Man, mm. I mean, these two have gone back and forth a lot. We've seen... Flower Man, like, really step up his game to deal with Mars in the past. Uh, you know, maybe he, maybe he is ready. So far, he's keeping it relatively stable, does get punished there after 5U, absorbs uh, Flower Man's 5U. Uh, this is what I'm talking about in terms, like, both these characters build meter like crazy. Yeah, look at Sorry's on 97. Okay, spins it on the back ship. Something uh, that's actually been kind of interesting, doing it again, just doesn't want to deal with GG. Mars is not tunnel vision when it comes to spending his meter. Even though Overdrive is so strong on Sorry's, he's not only looking to spend it on that. You know, like, it's the thing is, he has so much meter in terms of how he uses that, but when you think about what's going on here, like, he... He doesn't want to get put in the point where... He doesn't want to get put in the point where he has to rely on it if he doesn't need to. And, also, and I think the way that he uses... And look at... He's... It's also early enough in the patch that why not just try all the mechanics out? He's still got overdrive, actually. He, he still he. I just watched him burn through. Two, he built two hundred meter. meter. Yeah, because he burned both back shifts pretty much as soon as they were available. Mm. Oh, are we gonna have to talk about the meter gain of stories? Oh, actually, something I do want to talk about um, because of having more reasons to spend meter and the ability to sometimes spend 200 meter around, I think instant blocking is going to grow to be a bit more important in this game. And I do think Fairy specifically is one of the characters that you can take advantage of the sort of cheat instant block, which is if you're blocking a multi-hitting move like Fairy, you know, 2 and 4 L or 5 U, you can continue to hold the guard button and then just mash back and it'll give you right there. I think Flower Man actually just did it. Ooh, bit of a drop. Flyer Man has 50 meter. I'm curious to see if he goes ahead and goes for the back step or what he chooses to do, but... I don't think he bad. will in the corner because, keep in mind, Fairy does have a DP, which means she has the bad back shift. That is true. Oh, oh the Mars yeah, special. Kick, though. That, was rough. that was just a bad situation to be in because not only did he have... Marvin was in chip range, and Sora's just had... Like, Grandpa had meter, and it's about to get real uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, I didn't... Okay, maybe we're going to see the Matera coming out. But until you pointed it out kind of early in that match where Fairy is known for building meter very quickly, right? She, she's kind of a meter battery. But she only had like 60, 70 meter at a point where they had had even exchanges in neutral. And Sorry's was sitting on 96 meter. Yeah. It's just like the meter usage. There is the Matera. Okay. Meter usage in this game is so important now because of the options that you get that, with it. That's the best part about this patch. I think what a lot of people wanted was more complexity in how you spend meter rather than just use super once per round and you're guaranteed to have it. And if you're fairy, maybe you get two or whatever. Uh, the, the dynamics of how to spend your meter and where to spend your meter are so different now. I, I do think they did a really good job, even if Rush is a criminal act. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see the Matera. This is not brand new for Flower Man. He's actually had a pocket Matera for a pretty good while now. One thing that he definitely does do differently, he uses non-EX butterflies a lot, which is kind of a good tactic sometimes because a lot of people are keying their anti-butterfly reactions on EX butterfly, and they, they just kind of don't 
recognize when he does the regular one. Well, it's one of those things. It, EX Butterfly is a lot easier. It has a lot more recovery, and it's easier to call out. So if yeah. you're looking for it, you can light, light it up. But regular oh. Butterfly on top of like Ooh. the... The mental stack that comes with regular Butterfly on top of all of her other he stuff. He got the dodge. No, yep. no punish. He, he, got, he mashed dodge too hard, and he got two dodges. Yeah. It's Has his own overdrive, though, so he's not going to have to hold any chip. And now Mars. Mars got hit three times. So Mars lost his overdrive, and now he has to deal with overdrive Matera. This chip is going to be very real. Keep in mind that in the December patch, the big patch prior to this one, they had already buffed Matera's chip damage on her specials. This character does hella chip in overdrive. Absolutely. And I, what I'm curious, too, is I think Mars is confident enough in his Soras to keep playing, but he does have a back option for it. And while I don't necessarily think that La Diva Matera is perfect... It's better now than it was, for it sure. It absolutely is. And, like, backstep or not... Well, if you get cornered, a bad backstep is death. What a combo. Flower Man. Okay. Mm. I think this is a really interesting turn of events in terms, like, as far as what we're seeing because, you know, Flower Man has actively said that he wants to just stick with Fairy and play some stuff out. But we're seeing him bring this Matera out, and he is – that was – I. I, I'm not going to say it was free, but it was confident. Yeah, also showed us that apparently Matera doesn't have combo limit. Uh, that got buffed. She does. She does. It's just her. She can do longer grounded combos before the launch. Yeah, I got that. All oh, got buffed. It's Vera who doesn't have combo limit. No. <laughs> you get that woman in install, and she's just like, don't well, get hit. Yeah, juggle all four special moves. E even, even the fucking 2-2-X somehow juggles, even though yeah. it's not a strike. <laughs> you just put him in the schmicks. Did he get the dodge? No. Did he not. The burst? Flower Man probably going to be forced to overdrive himself. There it is. Mars got the dodge. Oh, he missed the punish, though. He didn't get the button. But oh! Flower Man went into the second hit. He forgot about the second hit. We've seen a lot of that tonight where multi-hitting supers and you just get cooked. Yeah. Wow, what a turnaround. And Flower Man, I mean, did have overdrive. Was in okay shape, but... Unfortunately, you know. Grandpa. Yeah. This is say Grandpa got mad. He's got the couch moving strength, right? The real strength. Not not fighting strength. The shit when you need someone to move the refrigerator so you can get behind it. That's what Soros yeah. does. And one thing I think that's really important in this matchup, and we see Marvin doing it as just kind of a preemptive way to check uh, dash punch, is fair is oh. Matera, Matera Far L, a button that has gotten substantially changed in the last couple of patches. Like, the way that its hitbox works, it's incredible Like it's incredible for stuffing stuff like Lariat, like yeah, Rush it, Punch. Yeah, it basically, uh, now that we have the, the hitbox viewer, you know, we found out it has a big hurtbox, but only on the ground. It has no hurtbox at the chest level. Did he get the dodge? Nope. And again, Flyer well, Man. This is where things are going to get dangerous. Yeah, Flyer Man's in a position where he needs to probably find a safe spot to overdrive. But Mars has already shown that he's scouting it. He just sort of missed the punish. I don't punish. think Flyer Man has overdrive active. It's not his. Uh, his I, yeah, I'm saying he needs to no. activate. Ooh, or Ooh. he just gets that 5H out. I, I also, you know, I don't know how much he's been playing Matera to mess around with it. I know I mentioned it earlier in the stream. Matera's medium buttons are all incredible. Yeah. She, you, you her 2M is like... Her a, 2M is fantastic. Her it, 5M is fantastic. Her 5M stuffs rolls and anti-airs. You yeah. can't approach from multiple angles against it. We see Senpai Spider make a lot of use yeah, of that Yeah, I, I, I would to like to see maybe, wants. you know, some 5M, some 2M into Rush. It doesn't help that, especially for air-to-air -air stuff, Soros's jump hard punch is... Or, sorry, jump H is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yes, it's a great jump. And also, I think it's this jump U, the upward pointing one. That's a very rare thing in this game. Most characters don't have air normals that cover an upwards angle. And he can sort of hit Matera when she's flying around trying to escape out of the corner with uh, JU. And he gets a full conversion off of that, too, if he's smart with it. Oh, speaking of full conversions. This is going to be dangerous. Animation. Good chunk of damage here. Flowerman's kind of in a weird situation, especially in terms Mars of... Mars has no meter, it. though. No, not quite no. enough. Chip definitely an issue, though. One more touch is going to be a chip. Fireman can't get touched between now and then. And the 2L 
seals the round, and now it's decision time for Mars. Are we going to go to character select? No, he is, he is right back in. This man is confident in his decisions. Yeah, that was a frame one rematch. I th and something here that I think is really important is the fact that we've been watching these sets, and I can't sit here and say that Flower Man, or that this... These sets are particularly close. It's usually down to one or bat or one or two small decisions that usually seals it for one or the other. But a lot of it just kind of deals with. Is oh no! Oh, okay, he's able to recollect it. Yeah, that was actually a pretty tough break for Mars because he got a counter hit five H, but didn't Goes get it confirmed. Throw bait, drops it. This is where he wants to be. Look at the chip! Oh my god! Like watching Matchstick Melee last night, this position that Mars is currently in, where he gets you into the corner. He's got overdrive stock. That's his win that in his mind. That's his win condition. Yeah, but again, we did see earlier in the set that he wasn't afraid to gamble on using backshift to escape a situation and risk not having meter later. He was confident that he would just build the meter again. He absolutely was, and we saw him do it. <laughs> and again, there's the backshift. Oh no, that's a big hit though. Hard knockdown here. That's kind of the rough thing, especially with Matera, is the way that her arrows work is a bad back shift. I imagine can probably get clipped by a uh, well. Well, y the, no, yeah. they're not. Yeah, they're not fire. They're not fireball invincible. So yeah, no. Be really uh, back shift is rush is not. Oh, it's not. So, yeah, back shift is full invuln. But but you're correct that the slow moving fireball can just sort of keep pace with it and be there. It's one of those things where Matera and Lance just oh. kind of have the ability to subvert the. Oh, mechanics. I think she's dead. No. Okay. Nope. Did not, not able to continue the, the juggle. There's the grab, though, and Mars evening up the score. Now, I'm not going to say that was free, but that was confident. Like, Mars definitely showing his late-game adaptations. And that's the thing I'll say about Mars is he's very – he adapts really well, like, kind of as a set goes on. It's something where you have to put him down quick or else he's going to slowly take it back. He's also very good at – you know, he'll do – Risky things, but not in a yellow way. Run-up grab was probably the most dangerous thing he could have done in that situation, but because he didn't go crazy with risk earlier in the round, he was sort of able to get away with oh, it. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, that's dead. That that, is, that's not bad. That's that dead. That is a dead Matera. He dead! Mars running it back for, back to set point. This is, this is a really good scenario for him. So dang, Ryan, I see you with the dirty old, got the dirty old man costumes on. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. No, that, you guys thought I did RPG mode to unlock weapons? I was getting cheeks out. A man spent 45 hours to see Matera's butthole, and you were going to ride along with it. Using the rush, plus frames. Yeah, Flower Man tried to challenge. Not your turn. Now it's your turn. Busting out. Ooh, Ooh, yikes. That's the thing that Matera has to be careful with with Sora is, is he can reaction 5U to hop, and unless she goes for empty into a throw, which can lose to 5U follow-up. Yeah, actually, if you instant pop 5U, you just can't do anything about it. And there's another one. Flower Man with the slightest life lead, both sitting on 100 meter. And honestly, I wouldn't even say that Flower Man has the life lead because at this yeah. point. Oh, hold on. This is good. This yeah. Is and yes, great play by Flower Man. Use the space because he wasn't going to be able to continue the pressure he was able to activate his own overdrive and now he doesn't have to worry about chip he can defend a he little more a, calmly uh, i i retract my previous statements uh mars got all five muscle tokens but got knocked out of overdrive so we're probably not going to see an ssba in this game unless something just goes wackety schmackety but yeah and flower man still had a little bit of overdrive left i was about to say we I said that, and he ended that match at 51 meter. It was, you know. Yeah, he would have at least had a rush on the table if he didn't die there. Absolutely. Great anti-air again. Flyerman has been very on point. Oh, gets the throw bait. going to hurt. Takes the Oki. Empty low. No, empty grab. And the, what a 2M check. Able to escape the butterfly Oki in a back throw this for position. Mars wants to be. Walking slowly in with the stagger pressure, waiting for Flyerman to make a de bad decision. One thing we've seen a lot of the set, a lot of the times where Mars loses control is just getting clipped by a raw arrow in neutral, and it it's rough, especially when you fight Matera. But that's something you have to be cognizant of, especially in terms oh, of oh, big counter hit, not able to continue, not able to continue, but it's dangerous. Mars has to be careful. If Larman has the reaction, he can SSBA that five U. 
anyone's game right now. Mars just playing the patient game at this point. He has to be careful, but he needs to pop. pop Man trying pop to get the what a two <gasps> H. Let's go! What a two H by Mars against the hop. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> and he did it behind the butterfly. The butterfly was still on top, obscuring yeah, the that vision was, a little bit. That was absolutely just kind of a man of no fear. Marvin, Marvin stay there. Mars still popping off Listen, over a single 2H. My man's hit a button, and he is very happy with himself. I would be, too. That The 2H-ing Matera uh, hop does, in fact, feel good. I mean, like... Are you really, uh, I'm going to say, are you uh, really that surprised, my man? It's not, like, that thing, like, puts his butthole directly into the yeah, ground. Yeah, also, that's a very good 2-H, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, like, <laughs> like, my man's is, like, his center of gravity is in the earth when he does that. So, you got to, like, you really got to be catching him slipping. All right, let me, oh, did Flower Man just sit down at Strive? Uh, I, I think believe so. He did. So I think we're going to be waiting for a few minutes. Uh. Yep, put Big Willie on deck. Yeah, that was pretty clutch. Uh, I would like to see more of that Flower Man Matera, though. I'm not going to lie. That Matera was looking kind of sharp, like more than I expected. Yeah, it absolutely was in a better state than you'd think for, like, a pocket character. Like, I like to sit here and think that my six is like, well, as you can see, I think my six is a turn tournament viable character, but like that flower man. I'm still I'm still spooked. I've, I've been grinding Jita. I just haven't played her in tournament yet. I've been playing her a lot in casuals. Uh, I'll, I'll probably break her out next time. That character's cracked right now. Yeah, Jita is like. No, she's she's incredibly strong right now. I've seen a lot of people sit there and say that she's in the like that she's like top top tier. I could uh, I could see that. I'm I'm gonna be real. I think that they're in different ways, but I think Jita is as strong as Belial in in this version. I think that she got way more out of the new mechanics than he did. Uh, oh, absolutely. Overdrive is very good for him the way his pressure is structured, but. Otherwise, she can, like she already had the ability to take you corner to corner, more or less corner to corner yeah. with like a good conversion, and now she definitely has the ability. S something to take you that's also to very good for her, uh, thanks to her run speed. They did, I guess it was sort of on paper, maybe a nerf. They made her recas not carry to the corner as far. I know this sounds hilarious because her corner carry is ridiculous, but they leave you closer to the opponent mid-screen. So you're able to continue Oki a little bit better, and it helps uh, something that we actually have not touched on tonight. They made a universal change to back tech. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, there's two types of techs uh, when you get knocked down, when you get hit with a soft knockdown in Grand Blue, similar to Street Fighter 4. You can either quick rise in place, or you can back tech. Previously, the back tech had a longer animation and sent you back further, and it had more frames. Uh, so you would corner yourself a little more quickly, but the other person did have to sort of commit to running all the way up in order to, you know, have some Oki there. But if you quick rows in place, you could interrupt some of that Oki. Now, uh, it goes less far back, but it has the same frames, mm. and it does not go significantly less far back. So it's very difficult to chase Oki on a soft knockdown in this version. Yeah, that was one of the things that I would say is particularly ridiculous in terms of... That's something I would say is particularly ridiculous, like important in terms of this is like just how important some characters can chase it down. You see characters Exa like and Jita has the run speed, right? Yeah, exactly. It's good. She, Cat she can't do anything. She, she can't get Oki. Yeah, it's some characters. Some characters are definitely are definitely more blessed than others. We're looking at like yeah, Jita can <laughs> if you if you back tack and you have those same frames, she runs fast, dude. She zooms. She'll just catch you, uh, kind of run you down. Uh, we already talked about, you know, the corner carry. Dang, um, my man Mars getting the JP players talking I'm, about him. I'm trying to think who else is. I mean, let me read this. Uh, you use you to uh, I'm, I'm just going to this. You will play her. God damn it. Mars is a master solids master, and he's good. I'm not going to take the opinion <laughs> of a feet lover. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I actually want to shout out. Um. Uh, you, I think it's like Utiaso. Yeah. Uh, Utiaso is really 
adamant about watching and kind of spectating American Grand Blue. They've interacted with a lot of our players and worked through stuff, and I yeah. think that they are... I, I also want to shout out uh, multiple... Oh, it's Yuchaso. Okay. Yeah, uh, multiple Japanese players also joined the NAPC Discord just to chat. Um, and, you know, some of them speaking really good English, and they come in and they said hi and, you know, talked about the game a bit. Uh, that was really cool to see. Um, we're seeing people from all over sort of congregate there now. Uh, you know, Viram had been there for a while, of course, over in the UK, but we're seeing more European players. I'm not uh, going to lie. More Brazilian I, players. I've, like, said this on Twitter, and if you follow me on Twitter, I'm sorry. But uh, I got to play – I sat down and played, like, a pretty long set with Viram at uh, a Combo Breaker. And it – I think if you – I don't want to assign, like – I don't want to sound like a worth to someone. Like, I don't want to sit here and, like, say, like, like, as a representation. But I think if if Viram is, like, the median for what the European players are, like, like the test sample. Yeah. I, 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 I am so fucking excited to play those players because I was, like, those sets were fun. I was having a great time playing. And, like, they were tense. I'm... It's got me really excited to like to meet up with some of the European players. I, on I'm excited for you know the potential of international competition at Evo in this game. There's so many Grand Blue registrants that you know several of them have to be not from the U.S. Uh, so I'm really excited. I want to say I know Ren is confirmed. Uh, I think Rio is confirmed. They're both also confirmed for CEO. I I did see that. Um, I know of the UK, I think like Fitizen and a couple of other people are yeah. there too. And I'm excited and I'm to see more of South America, see more of the Brazilian scene. One uh, thing we, like, and, and Mexico, dude, the yeah. Mexican players are so. It, it's really funny because the Mexican players play like it's KOF. Yeah, I was, I was talking about this on Twitter, and like, you, get, you might read this as like a negative thing, but it's really not. Mexican players have a style. They are. It is, that they, style is wake. I'll say it. I'll say it. <laughs> that style is, and, and Colt told me this himself. Mexican players are all about the wake up buttons. They're about the abare. Uh, but it's the timings that they choose. They did the, the like the sense that the player, and also especially the players coming from KOF, the players like uh, uh, Uh Their neutral is crazy. Their spacing is so good. Uh, it, it, it's always funny to me uh, when I watch someone who like knows less about the character that I play who also plays them, and they're not doing any of the technical shit, they're not doing any of the optimal combos, but their neutral is so fucking good that I'm just like, they're, they're way better at this character. They probably have like maybe a tenth of the time playing her, but sometimes you can't, you, you can't undo the gap that fundies can create, uh, right? Oh, absolutely, and I think that's one of the things we see is I see, like, you have some anomalies like Pax, uh, who play, like, 18 characters. But yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the MX players show up. They're playing one of the Shodos, or they're playing Bell. And you just see, like, they're definitely very aggressive, like, hyper-aggressive to a yeah. point that if you are, if <laughs> they will make you respect them what, and, like, what make they, sure What cracks pressure. me up is the most defensive, the, the, most, too, the, the most passive, a uh, Mexican player who I've played is Romantic. No <laughs> shit. Roman the Lancelot player who, you know, back in season one, you know, they, some, you know, kind of the meme of like Romantic style killing Grand Blue in Mexico because he was so oppressive with the Lancelot that the players were like, this game's not fun at all. Uh, and seeing him, him and I had to play in a tournament a couple weeks ago. It was like, it was like the first time me and Zom played each other when he still played Grand, where we just down backed in each other's faces for like 30 seconds. The first round of me and Romantic was just all of the damage came from throws and it went to a timeout. Like <laughs> everyone just blocked. It was that's, so weird. And that's it was kind of crazy. Yeah, and I was like, am, am I really fighting Lancelot in four frames? Is this is this, this isn't right? Am I fighting Mexico? <laughs> Next thing I know, there's going to be a Charlotte of the blocks. Like, uh, Ren would like a word with you. <laughs> but, all, right, all I'm saying is no one even tried to hit Ren with wake-up sweep. Uh, you know, That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Maybe hey. there's an exploitable, uh, exploitable weakness that it just takes a little bit of a bigger brain to unlock. <laughs> well, we've definitely seen you unlock new ways to use sweep. Bro, so. my... <laughs> I've definitely done some some pretty. People think wake up sweep SSBA is the only you know sweep into SSBA setup I have. Believe me, I I have 
I, fam, I have a I vault s- of ways to hit you with sweep. Fam, and a super I saw hit. your I saw your U button. That thing is that thing is like yeah, like the coating's wearing off. Like it's <laughs> like that button looked at me and told me to call protective service. <laughs> it was actually really funny. Uh, I had the chrome coating buttons when Grand Blue was new. Yeah, and you could tell the cat player because only the M button had the coating completely oh, worn off. <laughs> that's why that's why I'm like afraid to get anything other than like default silent Sanwas is because. They'll Someone's know which button you mash. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. I, I, too, am getting CPS called on me for my U button. But that's oh, besides. You, mi- you missed it because you were playing. I uh, I came up with definitely some new some new hyper meta mental 3D, 4D, 5D chess. When Mars, uh, when you blew him up in game one and then he went back to check his buttons, to fix his buttons, I realized that anytime mm-hmm. someone nukes me in game one in a set, I'm going to go back to button check and act like my buttons were wrong and not actually change anything. Just so they're like, oh, shit, did I only win because their buttons were wrong? Just oh, to I'm plant just going to you know, let you know right now. Like, <laughs> If I had won that set, I would have looked him straight in his face and go, map your buttons next time, motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you for the free game. Good game. Yeah, get your, ass off, get your ass off my cab. But... Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with yeah, us. By the way, I, we're just waiting on Flower Man to finish up in a strive set, and then him and I are going to play out the loser's final. I, um, I hope you all are enjoying our pseudo podcast because God knows, like, I needed a smile after last night. Yeah, everyone's favorite thing, two white people talking about uh, video, video games. games. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. Uh, well, the, or totally original content that's never happened before. <laughs> hey, listen, I heard Giant Bomb lost a big white guy. Uh, you're looking for someone. Yeah, yeah. I am large and white. But... But yeah, it's been a really interesting night. I'm always happy to see I'm always happy to see new players and especially like see one of the things that our 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 players really do. You know, you have Kane is like an anomaly. That man is an island. He shows I'm convinced Kane doesn't practice or play the game. I'm convinced he just shows up and is good. <laughs> I, I will vouch that he practiced. I've never seen him play the actually play the game outside of Ignite, and I've never uh, okay. seen him do worse than like fourth. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I will vouch for Kane. He's always he is on with like some pretty good nicknames. I can't think of what. Every time I see, I'm like Kane. You want to play? He's like I'm playing Smash or some shit, or I'm playing a card game or so. Or he's doing like Normie. Or I'm watching basketball or some shit. <laughs> like what? What? <laughs> And then he shows up and he fucking smokes me. And I play, I have 1,400 hours just on PC. Oh, God, I don't even want to think about PS. Like, when, uh, so when the PS5 launched, they had that, like, track your PS4 lifetime. And I was like, I don't need to see that. I don't. God, my. I'm going to look at that Street Fighter V number and have an aneurysm. Switch, Switch does that, and all you see is, like, Xen- every Xenoblade title, like, 200-some <laughs> hours. Oh god, for me it's for me it is definitely uh it's like Tetris ninety nine. There was like a good that, that game is crack. Dude, there was like a solid like eight months where I was just sitting there playing like playing it for hours upon hours a day. So All right. All right, all right, all right. we let's have blue to play. Flower Man is back. <laughs> Losers finals three out of five. Let's go. Alright, let me uh let me set let's let's have some fun. me uh let's have a little fun here but we're gonna have to we're got a little bit of fun names we're gonna have a good day all right let's players cam wide cam oh that one uh, that one ain't hooked up that's i'm hitting buns i shouldn't but uh while we're waiting let me uh let me get a little you gotta give the people what they want and our boys here All right. So we got the. Oh, we don't have the bracket stuff loaded. I'm just hitting buttons at this point. But let's get Willie back on screen. My man, are you pulling a glasses case out? Oh, he can't hear. Oh, he. Why is, why is he wiping his stick down? Like, motherfucker, you're about to make that thing dirty all over again. Did you spill beer on it? Come on. That's why you can't give Midwest players Canva pearls because we're just going to make them look all grimy. They smell like Malort. They got, like, hair and shavings all on them. It's just, you can't fuck around with that, man. Okay, they're actually getting into it. So let's let's get them. 
Let's get them set up here. We got Fireman with the uwu tag. Callisto sponsored by Large William. So this is our last two out of three of the night. Uh, or no, this is the last three out of five. Or three out of shit. So this is going to be a three out of five set. Uh, I'm sorry. Tuna Man guy, I'm really sorry. I'll try to sneak some Willie in when I can, but we got to get, like, I was given a, a strict set of instructions on how to run this stream. I'm having a little bit of fun as it is. I can't really sit here and break rules. There you go. Just You got a glimpse. If you didn't see it, I'm sorry. I can't help you. All right. Let's go ahead and let's get us in. Let's get us in the match cam. Also, uh, Rat McBilly, welcome. Tune Man Guy, welcome as well. I'm sorry I can't give you exactly what you want, but I'm trying my best, okay? All right. I'm So I actually kind of respect the decision from Marvin on this. I think that trying to keep warm on Matera is a better idea, especially rather than going back to Fairy. Because the sound is off. Um... I am not sure how to fix that, Crow. I am sorry. Once Ryan gets back, I will see what I can figure out, but I I don't know. Man, I can't believe I fucking broke the stream. I'm so mad at myself. Okay. Um, I have this set. Hopefully sound kicks back in now. Flowerman, go ahead and get in the OD. I think that's a really good point because especially with where... Yeah. Uh, Zayji, I'm going to keep it real with you. I, I am intimidated by this mixer that Callisto has. I will let him know uh, after this match to come up here and fix it, but I I work enough IT to know that if I don't know how to mess with something, I don't need to fuck with it. Well, that was a bad place for Callisto to be, especially after the meter got burned. But Flower Man managing to pull the time out. So this is the thing that I actually really respect about Marvin's, or this is the thing I really like about Flower Man's Matera. I think he takes a lot of pride in his zoning, just as much of his setups, because he's really willing to kind of play the hit and run and run away until he gets either a good knockdown or just an option to put you in the corner and drop GG. So I think it's really interesting in terms of like a player wise, but we'll kind of, we'll, we will see where everything is going. Callisto managing to keep it even. I'm curious to see what Marvin will do in terms of this, especially if Ryan is able to not, maybe get a lead is going to be a little bit interesting because I don't feel like these sets have been particularly divisive. Both of them are playing at a, spare, at a specific level, but I, it's we, we said it earlier. I wouldn't call it none of these sets are free, and I wouldn't even say these are confident. This is just something where I think that Ryan is very comfortable in this matchup having played Cello a lot. And while, while Flower Man's Matera is strong, and we both of us were impressed by it, it's one of those things where you play characters who you'd arguably sit there and say are, like, the best players of their character. Oh, that's dead. Hang on, let me, uh... He dead! Let me know if y'all heard the he dead. Ryan! Uh, there's no sound from the... There's no sound from the console. There's no sound from the console.
Okay. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that works. Character select. Okay, we got, I think we got sound back, so let me know how things are on your end, okay? Catalina. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Sorry about that, guys. We'll go ahead and set this up. Go ahead and get Callisto's due diligence. Fairy versus well, let me know. Catalina. Make sure that you guys can hear actual sound and not just me hitting really funny buttons, but... You know we got a uh, we got our he dead in, so we're big chilling, guys. Believe in victory. Battle one. Engage. So like I said earlier, we do see Callisto make a lot of. We do see a whole lot of him being willing to use him for us to get in, but Fairy is a character who has the ability to contest it. So this is really going to be where Flower Man. This is going to be. This is going to be where we need to see Callisto make a little bit of adjustments, especially when we're dealing with Fairy. And boy, howdy, are we seeing them? Bit of a bad fireball. Gets punched a little bit, but okay. I actually know which ones are the game now, so I can clean that down. I, I have learned. Two knobs on this mixer. I am here for the people. But I have gotten that a little bit lower. Um, you'll probably hear two seconds of low just because of how everything is going, but hopefully that sets itself straight. Listen, a uh, wise man once said, streaming is a blow up, and you just kind of got to live with it. But, well, yeah, you know, I'll say it here. I actually really like Callisto's willingness to play slower and be a little bit patient in this matchup. Cat has the options to really blow up bad buttons, but you still have to make sure everything counts in terms of in terms of just hitting Fairy. And I do. Also, like we said earlier, um, if you are looking to get into the game, we just had the South America South America server show up. If you are here from the LATAM community and are not in there somehow, please join in and make sure that you are heard and you are allowed to spend time with your, with your fellow players. So this is a pretty good... Oh. I really like that interaction from Marvin. Flower... Or sorry, from Flower Man. Callisto using meter to really kind of force the aggression and try to keep Flower Man cornered, but gets pushed out by Flower Man's own rush. That's what we were talking about earlier in terms of. That's what we were talking about earlier in terms of kind of how important meter is in this game now, because based on how rush and how other options in the game are handled, you really have to be kind of careful. Oh, time out. Ryan taking the round. Another good thing, he's going to go up too. Good stagger pressure. Also, let me know how the music sounds for everyone here. I want to make sure that you guys take care of it, okay? That was incredibly fortunate for Ryan. He managed to recover just in time for... Managed to recover just in time not to get burned up by... Uh, managed to not get hit by ball. Now has a very advantageous position in the corner. Has to maintain this advantage. Because at this point, very... Like, Flower Man's in a bad position. He's getting strike thrown. Doesn't have the 50 meter yet. Calls it out. Now Flower Man has 50 meters, so Callisto has to be extremely careful. Call it out on his own to, to even it out. Uh, Callisto, a little bit impatient going for the run-in. Gets clipped by the whip. 
We are going to an even game. Believe in victory. The thing is, though, that was, that was, like, incredibly close. And I think Callisto, especially the way that he's playing, could push us out. What I really want to see and something that I think would be important, I want to see how the Jita comes. I would like to see the Jita come out. Ryan and I were talking about it earlier, but Jita is largely believed to be, like, top, top tier for this. So I think... I don't want to sit there and say that Callisto necessarily needs a trump card because he's playing well. But in a situation like that, he really could bring Jita out and maybe turn the tides in his favor. Good DP to call it out. Oh, gets the counter hit. This is going to hurt. Come on, let me hit the button. I don't think it's going to kill, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be close. I think right now Flower Man is trying to save the meter for Chip or for a or for a setup. But especially in that situation, he had the ability to use Rush to break out and chose not to. But Callisto working Marvin back right in the corner gets the hit. Heat down. Battle two. If Callisto is able to take the set, that'll put him in a really advantage advantageous position. Especially because if Flower Man manages to take the set after, Callisto has every, like, can bring out Jita. Which would, you know, if he brings it out now after this, there's a real, there's a very real chance that he may have to deal with Flower Man adapting to it. But especially in a first to one with a character who is largely considered to be heavily buffed, that trump card could be, could, could put Callisto in Grand Finals. Goes for the rush. Unfortunately, rush is weak to both projectiles and to throw. So Flower Man kind of had a trump card open either way because if it hit, you know, the orb would come down and he could combo into it. If it didn't, let's say if it didn't, then he, well, that's as we saw, he had the throw on deck. So, ooh, spicy. Goes for the minus situation. This is going to hurt, too. Callisto didn't really burn a whole lot. He puts him in a nice, advantageous situation. Let's him recover, cycle a little bit of his cooldowns. And as you can see, Rust is on deck. Fireball is on deck. Flower Man is not in a good place. We say it a lot, but, we, but this is what I would call a single-touch game. If Callisto gets the right conversion into the corner, it, GG's, have a nice day. You're out. But Flower Man making his way out. Callisto using Rush to get in. I actually really like that as an option, especially now that he doesn't have the corner to go for the kill. And by the time I think that, by the time he works Flower Man back into the corner, I was going to say, by the time he works Flower Man back into the corner, that would be, he would likely have 50 meter, but he's building it back, and especially with Half-Life now, if he's willing to kind of play the slow game and work his way in, he really might be able to kind of, he might be able to build a, another thing of meter. He's at 30% now, 35, 40. And I think the situation, we may see this go to another time. Oh, that was incredibly fortunate. One thing I'd really like to see, uh, Callisto has enough meter for Rush. Maybe you'd like to see, especially when GG comes out, let that shit rip. That is an incredibly good option from Callisto. Wins with two timeouts. This is not like Callisto is playing out of his mind right now. And for as much as we all gas up Callisto, and I'm going to tell you right now, this man is the Midwest's like best kept secret. He has secured a very good thing, and he is. The bad thing about Callisto is he usually has kind of bad bracket luck. He'll run into me. Well, he did run into me when we saw it happen. He'll run into Mars and he'll run into Flower Man early. But especially with a lot of the stuff that he's done and especially kind of with how he, much he's been labbing the new mechanics, we're seeing the fruits of that labor pay off. Callisto's willing to make a lot of really strong decisions and work his way through. And I think we're starting to see a little bit of the frustration in Flower Man's play. Especially because if you think about it, he's technically given away a game with Matera because Callisto tore that up. But on the right decision, 
on the right decision, Callisto could have this, and we're looking at this right now. Callisto is at a point of a single touch game. Because the way, like I said, the way cat damage works, the way buttons works, if he gets a correct button, if he gets the correct conversion, Barry is dead. If any anything in a wall bounce, GG's, have a good dot, have a good day. Oh, what's the mix? What's the I respect that. He got the hit, didn't immediately Oh, did not go didn't get punished! Uh, the super pop from Marvin was so smart to kind of deal with that. Just to worry about Chip. Ah, oh, gets hit by the up dog. Or not even the up dog, the big dog. We've seen it though. This set is mad close. And that's how the last couple of sets have gone. We'll see Callisto get down around and then win the next two just off patience and being able to work through it. And I like this here. We're seeing Callisto. We're at a range where Fairy Far M uh, anti air is just not available. So Callisto is being really fastidious with how he's using things. I realize. If he wins, I'm gonna have to commentate winner's final or grand final solo, and I, I'm already losing my voice. Good wake up, OD gets GG off the screen, puts Fairy in a bad situation. Counter OD, ship and everything else doesn't matter anymore. We're back to the point, but that's it. Bad GG call, Callisto taking it to set point. He did, he did for the chat. Callisto needs to be very fastidious in this. And like I said, he still technically has a trump card he could bring out. But if he can, if he can, if Callisto can channel this out where it matters and not have to even go to a, to a final game, that's what he wants in this situation. Fireman doesn't get the conversion. He's trying to get the corner for the mix. No GG pickup. This is bad. It's not where Callisto wants to be. Doesn't have the meter to really get out of it. And Flower Man has setups and in install the deal with Backdash. So Callisto needs to be very careful. Oh, gets the DP. This is not looking good. Oh, loses. Ryan, bring it out! Bring it on out! Flower Man tying it up. Callisto taking a minute to do a, do a victory lap. Gets the water. Character select. Are we gonna see it? Is he gonna bring out the pain? No, goes immediately back to Cat. I think he wants to. I think he wants to win this. He's gotten up too. He can do it again. He took that to match point. Uh, you can feel the tension. Let's get. It. We got player cam. Player cam. The flyer man with the hoodie power up. What are we gonna see? One last willy for power. Let's get it on. Believe in victory. Battle one. Friends, if you want to see Callisto win, I want to, let me see some willy in the chat. This is where Callisto wants to be, especially in regards to damage. Gets the conversion. What's the corner pressure? Barman mashing out. Callisto, good block. Barman uses the side switch to get Callisto back closer into the corner and get out of the corner. Callisto needs to be very careful right now, especially with the meter on deck. Goes for the rush. One thing I'll say that I actually really like from Callisto and that we're seeing here is the use of light wall to actually cover space and take away some of the fairy buttons is incredibly smart. 
Mar and something f that's incredibly important for Marvin right there. Could have gone for a little bit more damage and chose not to because of the meter burn for Callisto. That would have put him into a wake up OD situation. Oh, we got the existence power up. Let's go. Friends, if you want to see Ryan win, let me see some Willie in the chat. If you want to see Marvin win, I don't know, press Uwu or some shit. Oh, goes for the delay. Stagger pressure gets it. Costa has to be really careful at this point, especially. Fairy doesn't have doesn't have the whip, which is her normal way of really kind of converting. But at this point, this is bad. This is a bad situation for Callisto to be in. Loses his get-in tool. It's hit. Ah, oh, it's not looking good, gang. Ah. Uh, I was, I understand Callisto doing that, wanting to go for the chit or wanting to kind of go for the situation there. At the point that he was at, Beppo putting coming out, uh, gets hit with the button. Flower Man's going to a grand finals. Ah, uh, Fairy winning. You hate to see it, but Flower Man out here playing with every single bit of his body. All right. I don't feel bad about that. I made him fucking work. <laughs> Fam, you had the entire chat losing their goddamn minds. Take some pride. All right, so that is going to set up our last match of the night. I'm so telling I'm you, man, you should have brought Jita out at the end of that. You had the checkmate. I was thinking about it. Honestly, I just uh, I have not played Jita Fairy specifically in a really long time, so I didn't want to like jump into it cold. I, I think I understand that matchup on Cat fairly well. Uh, I was hoping he would actually just kind of gamble another game away on Matera. <laughs> I think after the first one, like, that was a very clean win. So, you That's usually happened. He, uh, It was kind of funny. Uh, originally, I think when he started playing Matera, that was, I was, like, pretty bad against Matera. And he would, like, counterpick me with Matera just because I think he knew I was bad at it. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, then finally I figured out the matchup, and it helps. So it is going to be Flower Man on the loser side against Mars on the winner side. Flower Man has to take two first to threes, one to drag Mars and the losers with him, and then another to win the tournament. Mars, if he can close out a single one, is going to go ahead and be the champion tonight. And I think you know when you when you looked at the names we had in the bracket at the beginning of the night, this is th this was the highest odds. I think of the grand final we were looking at. I do think, you know, players yeah. like myself and yourself are, are always in the conversation as kind of the, the wild cards, but uh, definitely two of our strongest players hey, you, here. You speak for yourselves. I have wins on both of these people. I've beaten, I've, I've beaten both of them in tournament. I've won tournaments off them. I want to hear your shit, young man. I have definitely G beaten Give me both. my respect of noticeable third. <laughs> Yeah, my job I'm is. My, my, I am kidding. My so entire yeah. job is uh, is the like remind Marvin every two months to tighten up a little bit, or else he risks losing to my old ass, and that's embarrassing for everyone. I mean, you know, at some point I got to get there. I'm staring down the barrel at thirty of thirty, so. Bro, I'm thirty nine in like less than a month, but that's okay. Even old cats have claws. That's what I'm here to teach the kids. I mean, I grapple, so like I, I don't. I didn't come here to play fundamentals. I came here to fucking win. Speaking of coming here to win, both of these players look pretty locked in. Uh, very close winner's final set. Did end up 3-2 Mars, you know, off the back of a really clutch 2-H uh, against Matera that he wouldn't shut up about for like seven minutes afterwards. So we'll see what he has up against this fairy. Starting off strong, going for the mix. I'm curious to see exactly what's going to go on in this set. Because yeah, Flyerman did, he did drop Fairy for Matera, I think, after being down 1-0 uh, in winner's finals, and his Matera looked very good against Mars. It did. I'm like, I'm really surprised. When he first went into Fairy playing you, uh, the, my general thought process was he wants to keep his Matera warm for this next set because he's going to need it. Yeah. But now that he's had to switch and, like, sweat with Fairy, I think he's at a point where 
I, I think if he if he would have won that set, and keep in mind that was last round, uh, he he was very close to winning that set. I think it would have been a good idea to start from the winner's side with Matera and then fall back to Barry. But I like this. He has the long road, right? He he has to come from losers. I he think does. It, and Mars has like. What I will say, and I mentioned it earlier in their set, Mars is Mars is willing to. Oh, Mars that's is, gonna hurt. Yeah, okay. That, oh, yeah, that, that did not go for the damage there, but Mars is what I would consider like fast to adapt. He is, or not fast, but he's a slow burn. The longer he has. The yeah, he will make adjustments over the the course of a match. I think for Flower Man's side, you know. The long road, you at least want to start with your main. Wow, big, risky, super. Flyer Man has SSBA. Is yeah, he gonna but he's going to go for the mix. Yeah, he might actually be holding for overdrive. Ooh! Oh, wow, he was able to just shoot through it. He still has SSBA, and he's going to let it rip, and this should close out game one. It does. Flower Man, first chunk on the board on this long road to a reset. And we saw this in their winner's final sets, but... I'm just going to say it. Mars beat the fucking breaks off Marvin in that set. And this looks like a complete invert. On the ferry, for sure. Yeah, yeah. the, the Matera obviously made a good comeback for Flyer Man. But yeah, the first game or two uh, with the ferry wasn't looking too great. And Flyer Man, his reactions are pretty on point. He's getting those. I, I want to put this out there as like a general rule. Uh, to separate you are not going to open dope flower man no Do no not no test his reactions I, I i'm saying that if you want to know a good grand blue player if you want a really low level way to tell who's good at grand blue see what they do when somebody whips a grab in their face if they secure a knockdown they're good mars using the rush to keep pressure very yeah, smart option a nice combo against crouching there would have been even more damage because he also had the option of ending that in the up kick since he did the rush punches against the crouching opponent. And especially at that point, like I respect the meter burn on that because Mars had so much meter to work or had so much health to really play around with. Yeah, like just spend all your timers and then worry about what comes after if it doesn't kill. Nice neutral jump. And this, these are the little adjustments that Flower Man is making, right? He's been having kind of a hard time dealing with the jump angles that Mars is showing him, and now he's trying out new solutions, and that neutral jump worked out, and another punish Mars. here. And we're seeing Mars right now willing to build uh, over, or willing to build, build muscle stocks. I have a sneaky suspicion we'll probably see Macho Ultimatum if he doesn't die here. Jesus. I think, yeah, Marvin has to bounce out because of the overdrive. Okay. Uh. I was about to say, I was like, this... That is definitely not meaty. <laughs> that was definitely not a life lead for Flower Man. I know it looked like it was. The UI maybe had a bug. I guarantee you that had he not closed out on that hit, that was an even game. Oh, absolutely. Nice whip punish with the sweep. We said it before, but... Sora, like, Sora's... Muscle tokens really Woo! only affect Sora's and Esther and... Um, yeah, in install, yeah. In install, but... Oh, this is bad. Flower Man is looking dominant. I'm just going to go ahead and take credit for this. I warmed him up. I don't I don't think Mar I, I, I don't think Marvin plays like this if I didn't, you know, really put the bricks to him. I will say there is a... You know, we talk about Loser's Bracket Punk. That motherfucker needs to shut up. Loser's Bracket Marvin is where it's at. Yeah, and it's something that he continually proves on. I mean, if we look back like a year or two ago... Flyer Man did not have this sort of mental composure when things went against him, either early in the bracket or in an individual set in games. And he's worked so hard at just not getting tilted. Wow, great use of the 2 3 6 there. You know, if there's one thing I'll say, Flyer Man has definitely been working to use the new patch to his advantage to get newer and funnier ways of mix. Also, using the 5U to build a boatload of meter. Now, this is where I'm curious. Is he, I was going to ask if he was going to use the meter the way he would pre-patch or if he was going to hold for OD. He opts to spend it on the ball super. Gets a really good chunk of damage. GG is there. Whoa, the latest instant overhead. The JL reaching from so far away. The delay on that is ridiculous. Like, I actually really respect that because, you know, Mars was looking for any sign of movement to pop OD. And then just the delay, your tents, and that shit comes out quick. And from so far, from the range, oh my god, speaking of from so far, yikes. 5H, catching very... 
All right, busts out. Good response on the Clash. Gonna uh, get the combo here. He should get a side switch, I think, if he can get this hard knockdown. Can't hold it forever. Yeah, GG can... Oh, no, he goes for the sweep. Interesting, keeping himself in the corner. Not afraid to fight out in a clutch spot dodge. I think at this point, especially with the way things have been going, Flower Man has proven that he has multiple opportunities and abilities to get out of the corner. So I understand him maybe going for a more setup or trying to keep an advantageous position. Yeah, now he has Especially to make a decision saw, uh, with the meter, though. In the side switch, we saw last time that Mars is willing to check and kind of call him out, but... Ooh. I'm mad. Marvin blocked every time I did overhead. Come on. <laughs> so one of those overheads kind of cake, though. Actually, it's pretty... Yeah, it, it's hella far. Nice jump in the air for Mars. A nicer air grab from Marvin. Barman... Still looking undeterred after dropping a round. Already has half life lead. I think that's the first round we've seen Mark drop his entire set. And this is a bad situation. What's the mix? Mars. Stays low. Has Stays low again, head. and a perfect. perfect. And Flower Man. We are going to grand finals reset. Yeah, and quickly, the speed that we arrived at this reset with. Mars looks like he's taking a bit of a break. I think he should. I yeah, mean, absolutely. I mean, he just got, I mean, if we're being real, he got kind of steamrolled. Yes, he took that one round, but Fireman kind of on one right now. Nope, changing character, though, sticking with the stories. I think at this point, uh, the character that he had is not what you play fairy with. I think that, yeah, I, I feel like Mars maybe just needs to slow down a little. He's overextending with 5U several times, and... Fairy just has so many options to pile on multiple hitting things that can last. You saw it, right? Yeah, Mar no, Mar I, c I completely agree with you in terms of what to look for and what Fairy can and can't do. We know Mars is kind of an aggressive player, but we also know that when he needs to taper it off, he does, and I don't feel like he is. Or yeah, we don't see him falling back to neutral or, or playing defensively the way is normal for him. Maybe that is because he had the winner's advantage and he was kind of playing loose with the set advantage, but he's in losers now too, so let's see. Yeah, even there, he was taking a turn there. Very greedy. Fairy cannot punish 623H, but it's it's still her turn. Oh, oh. big JH. That's going to hurt. Nice. Good use of the EX DP as well. That's a safe jump. Good patience from Flower Man. But the t and the side switch, and because he was counter hit, even though it only hit once, he still got a combo. And look at the walk down. Wow. Flower Man not out of the woods yet, but that was no, an impressive but series of events. He see, has and this is what we're talking about in terms of overextending. We'll constantly see Mars go for like funny guy pressure after the rush hits, and he doesn't and he does it wrong, doesn't get a conversion. And Flower Man has challenged every single time. And Flower Man, uh, notably, you know, thanks to the new mechanics, changing kind of how he's thinking about his meter usage, a lot of times pre-patch, he would just do ball right now. Just to sort of win neutral for free, right? And get in with pressure, empty jump low, good block. We said it, that gives him his, it gives him the set play that he really likes, but the way he's willing to just kind of sit on meter and be careful, I actually really respect his decision. Oh yeah. no, uh, but the one EX rough punch, unfortunately the amount of life our man had left, not enough to survive it, was also starting to run out of time. He would have had to take some risks in the next 10 seconds or so. And you can see, we were just talking about uh, Mars, you know, slowing it down. You can see he's kind of grinding this to a halt. And it's interesting because... That's what we said, like, it, Mars is willing to kind of cool down on his on his overextensions. And I yeah. think that's what... One of the things that Flower Man is really good at is he'll Ooh. turn... Ooh, oh, he didn't believe in the combo, though. Nice. Almost got the punish in the fight, dude. One thing I'll say is that Flower Man is very much willing to turn an overextension into murder. So... I think Mars slowing that down is definitely giving him less opportunities to guess, which is really important for Perry. Or against Perry, mind you. Yeah, I feel like the main difference is like when you saw me playing Marvin to the timer every time, that was on purpose. That's how I want to play. Mars doesn't want to play like that. That's not fun, you know, for the kids. Overdrive, but it punish. whiffs, and yeah, it gets the punish. I understand Instant that. overhead. I completely understand the reasoning on that because. And another one, uh, ball yeah. super. This is going to be very close to dead. No, Five dead. HDP, yes. Flower Man yes, evening up the round count. So I think we're starting to see Mars getting a little loosey-goosey again in his pain. Yeah, but th that's kind of what I meant, though, right? Even though he is willing to defend and to play slow when he needs to, 
that that's not necessarily his play style. That's not how he wants to play. He just recognizes as a competitor, he needs to stop getting his shit pushed in for a couple minutes. Look at the meter advantage for Flower Man right now. Using the rush, now he gets the 50-50. Yep. And he has another one. He can just do the same setup again. Good call out. Good DP though, looking rough. And there's the 2M to seal it. Flower Man, four straight games. This is, this is a really common scenario. We saw it, I was gonna say, we saw it in SSSO, like, last time we played. Flower Man got sent to losers early on, met me in grand finals, and just speed ran that shit. And this is the hard part, right? If the fairy is just not making major mistakes and playing clean, like, what do you do? Yes, yes. <laughs> Soros has better options against Fairy than most, but... Yeah, he can attack from outside her range with the Rush Punch, which is a big deal, but Flyerman's doing a really good job of finding the timing to stuff them. I think the way that I would necessarily describe this set, and I think it's... I think the thing I think that's happening is that Flower Man has conditioned the shit out of him. Like, that's the rough thing right oh now. Oh, my here. God. And he's still got the JL, but great heads up mash by. Yeah. I really like that mash by Mars. That was a soft Goes knockdown. Set up. Oh, it's going to hurt. Blocks it. Can't get a punish. Her buttons are too slow there, but able to get some space away out of the corner. Mars sitting trying in overdrive. Build, trying to build muscle tokens. I'm curious what the play is here. Uh, I mean... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he needed to because if he got hit low enough to end up in SSBA territory, he was going to be done with overdrive anyways. His yeah. overdrive timer would have been completely knocked out. Great counter poke there with the rush punch, but too early with the grab. And Mars cornered himself. Eight frames to grab protection on it. Nine. You, you Nine. thought this was a casual eight frame throw protection game? Hell no. There is hella throw protection in this game. And again, stuffing the rush punch. Great recognition of 5U. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Fireman is just playing really fucking well right now, and I don't know what Mars needs to do to counter this. I think at this point, like, Mars needs to counter condition Flowerman back, and at this point, he's going for options, and Flowerman is just willing to challenge it because he's either got a health lead or he's willing to. We've seen Marvin mash in plus situations where, where Mar or we've seen yeah. Flowerman mash in plus situations where Mars will do kind of like a funny guy pressure situation to get in. At, at, at the end of the day, it is, you know, RPS, right? And if the other person is just consistently choosing correctly, it's hard to combat. It's also hard to justify, like, going for these options, but... Oh, overextended. Didn't get the whip, though. Wrong special came out. Oh, the walk down. This is a really advantageous position for Mars, but yeah. has to be really careful because a bad option is going to end up And dead. there's the challenge from Flower Man. And yeah, right now that Mars... That was unfortunate too because that could have killed. Th this is where Mars has to be really careful. If he gets tapped twice, that overdrive is gone, and he's not going to have meter again for a while. So every 2M, every 5M, very dangerous all of a sudden. Flower Man just... Trying to take his time. Time is winding down, though, under 40 seconds. Mars has to be really careful on this because at this point... He, he's doing the right thing, right? Fairy can't do chip right now, and now there's 20-some seconds. Okay. Uh, Overdrive back. is gone. Now chip is back in play. Chip's back on the menu, boys. There's not a lot of time to apply it, though. Yeah, Flower Man needs to get some damage in. Yeah, he yeah. needs, like, one real big mix, and he is going to spend the ball... Great I, trade for Mars. I That's think, exactly what he yeah, needed. I think that was the correct thing yes. to do. Yes. Take the fastest, highest priority move Mash you out! have. And yeah, the Abare, we call it. Mars mashing. Finds the hit. Seals a game. Finds his first game of the grand final set. Yeah, five games in. And we did say this earlier. Mars is a slow burn. This could be the start of the comeback, especially with... That shit was, was not quick. That was a long set. Pressure. Fairy pushed to the corner on block. Finds the counter sweep. Caught with the low. Nice mix. 
What's the mix again? Low again. Not Low again. Not in a position to use back rush to get out of that too, especially with the corner position. He has to be careful. Oh, he dodged too early. He had a good call out. All right, what's the mix? Is he going to install? No, he's going to grab, grab. Ball super. It's not going to kill, but it's going to yeah, hurt. I, th I think there's too much scaling. No, I think he can kill. Oh, no combo limit, though. Whoa, uh, still able to collect it. Yeah, I think after the ball, he would need to run up and do, like, 5 HDP. Yeah, it would have been real goofy, but Flower Man, that's kind of the story of this set is when Flower Man wins these mat or when Mars wins these rounds, they are fought through blood and grit, but when Flower Man does it, he makes it look clean. Like, it is a, it, it almost looks like a free round. He is doing the right thing all the time and just making it work. Oh, speaking of free rounds, though, that's a clash. Yeah, Flower Man got away with one there, but not for long in the perfect. And this is a very, very pivotal round right now. Speaking, Who's going to go up 2-1? Yeah, this is, at this point, I think this is probably going to decide a lot of the story of this set. If Mars can get up to 2-1, especially after starting from such a deficit, that's going to do a lot of damage to Flower Man's confidence in this. Yeah, and really, I mean, yes, he got reset on in quick fashion with a 3-0, but this is the set that matters. Absolutely. You know, we always say in Grand Finals, like, you, Champion has one for data. Oh, and it looks like Mars gosh. is finally starting to get his data down. Okay, gets the anti-air. Slightest of life leads for Flower Man. Evens it up with the 5 view there. Mars using a little bit of funky stagger pressure, and I actually really like the idea of it. We saw a lot that he'd go for kind of rush, rush punch stuff, but... Now he's using his buttons in a really creative manner in terms of like how to get out and work through them. I think you gotta be oh, careful was... against Flower Man though, is when Flower Man challenges, he doesn't usually do delay buttons. He does make a hard, like I'm gonna challenge here. And I died to him a ton because I didn't believe to just frame trap him. And his decision making is usually very good on like, this doesn't feel real. Mars is the OD, has to be careful though. Yeah, the counter OD, great. That's that's especially good because I think the, the too, hit because takes a chunk Mars out. Had to, Mars had to know that was coming too, especially like yeah, with the with the advantage that there's Mars another hit. There. That overdrive is almost gone, and there's going to be a huge. There it is. This is a huge this change in momentum. Dangerous. Able to get a hit himself. Larman though with the lead, and he's not taking chip. Lost his overdrive. Now the chip is back on board. Install. 5L, oh, the it. reverse beat, has the lead, and there's the anti-air and Flower Man going to go up 2-1. Yeah. to one, And this has to be the... Flower the, Man regaining the lead. This Mars. has to be the most... Between my, my set with Flower Man and this set, this has to be the most timeouts that he's faced in months. Oh, absolutely. He's more than... That's the thing is, like, he's playing... Especially with an aggressive character like Soriz, the amount of times that, like, both of these sets have been willing just to go straight to... Timeout is impressive. Oh, didn't get down in time for the punish. Good block by Flower Man. Oh, 5H on. Oh, that was unfortunate. 5H probably would have caught there, but. Yeah, by, good good choice with by Mars. If you're slightly minus, I mean, 5 view is great. Gets the corner. Jumps out. No punish. Still in the corner. Going to get uh, some space here. Oh, no. That was unfortunate. Backshift gets oh. the punish on the grab. Good choice using the EX rush punch there. Now he doesn't have it available though. Oh no, got the neutral Good shot. Good call though. out. This is, these are the late game adaptations we usually see from Mars. And Flyer Man might have doomed himself. He, I think he did. That backshift yeah. cost him all his meter. He has no rush, all he has is DP. And the chip is starting to build. And yeah, if you're Mars. Oh, gets clipped. Yeah, he does end up going to do something. I mean, <laughs> he really didn't need to. He was in such control of that situation. He could have just chilled for 45 seconds if he felt like it. Counter hit. Okay. Fireman busts out of the pressure. Did lose a significant amount of life, but gets the back throw. Good positioning here. Building a lot of meter. There's the rush, though. Busting out. Rush back at you. Back into the corner. Right back in. Oh, the JH, though. We talk about how good of a jump in that is. Fireman kind of starved for resources here. Both life and meter, but big grab. grab. Gets it. Oh, no, but the 5U burst is enough to finish it. And Mars evening up the count. It's, which is kind of ridiculous because the 5U burst does not do that much damage.
Yeah, Perry, though, was only on a pixel. That's all it takes sometimes. We're going to weigh in. Now, this is it. Like, there is no more games after this, so. Good start for Flower Man. Catching the anti-air for the hard knockdown. GG is out. Caging in the corner, not overextending there. I like this. We got some G-Bags. G-Bags in the Coliseum. Flower Man being really smart, trying to get that, get that uh, GT back, so that way if Mars makes a mistake. Yeah, I really like that. It, that's sort of like mental warfare. Mars is the kind of guy who will engage you oh, in memory. I feel, I feel like Flower Man set Mars up to sort of meme a bit with the G-bagging, but as you said, that just killed time for DP to come back. Meter advantage still for Mars. Didn't get the punish. 5U anti-airs, though. It's actually a very weird button. 5U, not the craziest in terms of boxes, but it is uh, level 4 priority. It will outright crush all normals grounded in air other than close 5Hs. One mix for the round. There's That's the sweep. It. Flower Man taking on tournament points. Yeah, Mars, let's see if he can claw his way back in one more time. And we've seen it. Like, Yeah, I mean, that's how the winner's finals went. Absolutely. Mars has... We've seen Mars fight his way tooth and nail. It's just a matter of if he can do it. The, oh, Shale. Okay. The problem for Mars is there's no Matera hop to 2H now. Yeah, I know. You have Fairy who just does whatever she wants in the sky, bro. Yeah, total air superiority. Great whiff punish with the sweep. Didn't get the GG he was looking for, so going to have to get out of the corner a little bit later. When the JH just bypassing the 2H from Barry. It's going to have a lot of scaling. Mars going for the Did he get the dodge? OG no. Setup. And Flower Man's going to have to hold some chip before he has enough meter to OD himself. As it now. Bust out. I. It's weird, man. Like, I... I don't know. More G-baggery. Flyer Man getting the wall bounce. Using the dive kick, no bite from Mars. This is a tense situation. This is not where Mars wants to be with the amount of health that he has. Good block on the rush, and now he has no meter. Uh, Install. What's oh! What's the mix? Blocks the throw. Oh, and there cut. it is. It. Flower Man hanging tough in there. Great showing from him, good mental composure. I was really worried when he used install instead of ball or OD. Uh, actually, I guess ball in neutral you can't really do against stories because of EX Rush Punch, but uh, that install led to such a scary situation. Absolutely, that shit was ridiculous. And showing it off, like this is kind of, sets like these are what you come to the Midwest to see like this is a our sets are just knock out drag out and especially for things like this that that was an sf4 grand final man yeah. that was tense but good stuff to both the players uh, i want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight uh, i want to thank seth for helping me hold down commentary as usual a uh, reminder uh tomorrow we have the waifu dome online sso you can uh Hit at the Waifu Dome on Twitter. You can see a link to the signups. At 1 p.m. Central Time, there is a Midwest bracket. And then I am also reaching out to our friends on the West Coast, uh, running a West bracket at 2.30 p.m. Central. That's 4.30 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Central. Uh, so hope you guys will sign up, tune in. Uh, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Tell, uh, tell your friends you love them. Like, uh, tell, your, tell people you love you love them. Like, uh, this community is close. We take care of each other. You know, just uh, do the love. Yeah, do the love. Do the love. Go do some love. Give me a he did right now. Hold on. Where is it? No, actually, where is it? It is on here. I know, oh, I know. I was mashing that shit. He did. Thank you, sir. We did it. We did it. All right. With that, we're out of here. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Love you, buddy. YouTube, uh, 